also, it's funny because <laughs> it was far too wide, but we soldiered on. <laughs> That's the worst gynecology joke I've ever heard. <sighs> Welcome to Big Time Cast, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Chris. I'm 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 that, I'm the I'm the one called Chris. I'm Matt. I'm the one not called Chris. Oh, it's just you know it's 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 science, basic science. Yeah, that's how that works. And like global warming, yeah. it's a lie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> see it's... me in my office after class. Okay, so you little swines, welcome back to another week of <laughs> filth and frivolity. Another week of the world continuing to turn and we're going to talk about the least important things in the world yes that's i mean because let's face it you die one day you're gonna die you may as well fill that space in between now and then with meaningless tat i love spending time with you chris i always leave so elated and uplifted oh babe not depressed at all oh tits tit biscuits are you want to talk about something jolly and uplifting no oh okay shazam oh you just changed before my eyes into a ten-year-old man-child. I'm a, I'm a ten-year-old boy. A t- ten-year-old child man, and now you are a uh, man-child before my very eyes. So apparently Shazam is still happening. Yeah, this is the DCEU's adaptation of Captain Marvel, which they can't call Captain Marvel because the other team have got a film about their character called Captain Marvel. And also I think legally they have the rights to it now. Yeah, Mar- Marvel were the only ones who can have a title called Captain Marvel. Well, the character's called Shazam now. Really? Yeah. Uh, well, I guess, yeah, in, in, at least with the film adaptations, it would dilute the market like crazy, wouldn't it? Um, it, it would confuse everybody, I mean. Like, it would make people go, but hang on, Captain Marvel, I have this kind of character. That, don't ever do that again. Mm. What about if I put my clothes back no, on? No, don't ever do that again. Fair enough. Um... I just sit here naked and creepy. Shazam is 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 all we know so far is it's one of the planned DC movies. It's scheduled for April fifth, twenty nineteen. Jesus Christ! And uh, Dwayne the Rock Yom Homsom is Black Adam. Is Black Adam, and that's yeah. all we know so far. Like he's he signed on like he's co He signed on like two years ago, didn't he, to play Black Adam in this movie? Like, yeah. He's, talk about he's... talk about playing the long game. He's been on, he's been on it for ages. Like he could he could have been freaking he could have been a Marvel like star by now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, he could have fought for Aquaman probably back a couple of years ago. He'd probably yeah. be like, I'll be Aquaman. Let me be I, Aquaman. Let God, me be Aquaman. Damn it. I think you probably still should. <laughs> um, but uh, no, this came from producer um, Danny Garcia. Hello, I'm Danny Garcia. Racist. What? So racist. That's him doing an impression of a Mexican man. I'm sure it is. Um, <laughs> the the Zack Snyder. Yes. He's not going to be involved in Shazam. Okay. So no Zack Snyder in that um, all in, all up in your Shazam, making it all dark and moody and broody. Yeah. Which is maybe a good thing, but. It is set in the same universe as the other DC movies. Yeah, which, which, is, is, what, which is why it's not yeah. entirely a good thing. Because I think Snyder will probably they will probably consult him for tone or something. He's not probably... involved, Christopher. I don't believe that. He's for not a involved. I don't believe that for a second. No, we're, about, we're about five minutes away from them going. Well, Zack Snyder's involved. They'll be like, oh my god, sake. Zack Snyder is not involved. Which is which should be which should be a good thing. Because again, to reiterate, this is the story of a ten-year-old boy who says a magic word. And turns into a super powerful Superman s character with the wisdom of Solomon and the the speed of Hermes and the might of Achilles and all this stuff. Like that's his. That was all you could remember. That's all I could remember. But that, that that's power of thing. Zeus. Power of Zeus. So that should be like the most amazing story. That should be DC's attempt to grab kids and be like, "This you could be this character." It should be them doing Superman properly. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That too. Because but... he's a Superman analog, really. But what is like Snyder involvement or nay? I've got this horrible feeling they're going to make him dark. They're going to focus on like the wizard aspect of it all, the magic aspect. The wizard, more of a the the one chooses the wizard, Mister Potter. Well, can I can I be rebooted in five years? Because I don't want Snyder to choose my wand for me. Snyder's chosen your wand already. Oh God, poor Mister Potter. Bye. Don't hear that. Um, Um, So yeah, Uh, I. I remember seeing casting rumours when they announced the... Sorry, I just went through puberty again. I remember seeing casting rumours <laughs> yes. when, when they announced that The Rock was playing Black Adam. 
of people going, oh, Channing Tatum should be Shazam. I'm not entirely against that, but at the same time, you'd have to make it be a goofy movie but then like, it also to, to depends, pay off. It also depends how much time they'd spend with him as Billy Batson. Yeah. And like, how they would, would they just get a child out to be Billy Batson? Would they like, go all Polar Express on it and get the person who plays Shazam to play young Billy Batson? Would they go all Polar Express on it and get the play, person who plays young Billy Batson to play Shazam with CGI? Like, you see, Nave said it, Shazam would be a better animated movie. Well, most superhero movies would be better animated movies. No, no, well, that's true. Well, I mean, for years, they were those um, fake Pixar designs were doing the rounds of mm. Pixar-style DC characters. And the more and more I looked at them, the more and more I was like, yep, yeah, Warner Brothers. Yeah. Th- this is how you do it, Warner. This is this is how you this is how you do it. Just do animated DC movies. Well, Sony is still talking up their animated Spider-Man project. Yeah. Which what? So, which I don't think that's going to be a tie into the cinematic universe, no, though. It's going to be something. Uh, although they'll probably get Tom Holland to voice it, maybe. I don't know. But Spider Man animated, I think it's called at the moment. But it's going to be its own thing. But Warner's are doing that too. Lest we not forget, Lego Batman. Lego Batman, which is a Batman movie and also an outright comedy. Yeah, which looks which freaking great. Really smart. It looks so good. Um, <laughs> well, DC's, mine doesn't give you seatbelts. D- <laughs> DC's animated output has been of a. Much higher quality than in, than than Marvels and also DC's live action movies for all, forever. Yeah, well, really? it's it's of in recent years DC make a lot of missteps. Green Lantern animated series cancelled the season in. Young Justice cancelled two seasons in. Not because it was bad. Um, though, Batman Brave and the Bold cancelled. No, but that's the thing. Batman Brave and the Bold cancelled when it was cancelled, and even the last episode of that is is a satire on shows being cancelled to re- be replaced with dark, gritty updates. Mm-hmm. And in that, they they show a Batgirl show as what replaces it. And it's CGI and gritty. And Batman's like, no, this isn't what I wanted. Like, And then they made me wear the Batman. And then they made me wear the Batman. <laughs> which was basically that. It was a CGI, <laughs> dark, gritty Batman. So bad that it nearly killed you just now. Yeah. And they also... Actually, and they really replaced... They took the budget... The, the, the budget they were using to make the Green Lantern animated series. Um, which which fit the visual style of Where the Batman. So you could have had them all be an interconnected TV universe. But they got rid of it. And that budget went to Teen Titans Go! Which when everyone first heard about it, they were like, oh my god, they're getting the cast of Teen Titans back together. This is amazing. And then we saw it, we were like, it's about chibi versions of the characters getting pizza. What the fuck? There's a place for that, but it's not replacing Young Justice. That isn't the place for it. No, 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 no. And it's not, but also like, there's a place for it. Yeah, don't cock teasers by bringing back the cast from your surprisingly very mature anime-esque show from like 10 years ago which yep. was huge and still has a massive fan base don't bring back that cast to then just make them a saturday morning not even a saturday morning cartoon a newspaper strip version of teen titans like I, a three box oh let's get to a joke at the end of it i'll be a wacky version of teen titans you do not do that shit i don't care how many times you randomly draw bane's mask from dark knight rises in a frame as a cameo in a trophy room not good enough not good enough. That is a real thing, by the way. There's a bit where there's like computer readouts of different bits and pieces of equipment, and one of them is Bane's mask from Dark Knight Rises. That's horrible. It's, well, it would be fine if the show was good. Like, it was the Assault on Arkham style thing where they pull out the, the mask, uh, the, the opera mask from Batman 66, oh, yeah, slash yeah. the mask Heath Ledger wears in the bank heist in Dark Knight. Because that, that was the good thing. When I was I started rewatching Batman 66, I've said rewatching, I started watching it properly from the beginning and in its entirety when I got the box set. And like the fourth or fifth story is a Joker one, and there's a bit where he disguises in this opera, and he disguises as the operatic singer, and it's a clown mask, and it's that mask. It's the mask Ledger's wearing in Dark Knight. It's like, Amazing. oh my god, Nolan referenced the '60s show in more ways than one. What about the episode? Some days you just can't get rid of a bomb. What about the episode where where Batman and the Joker have a circus competition? Not going up to that yet. That's season three, uh, where they just go uh, uh, and they just start <laughs> making everything. Um, <laughs> Oh, I will get up to that eventually, and I'll report show. back. I've got the surfing Batman action figure, though. So. I think I'm going to try and track down some of those <laughs> original 1940s serials. Oh, the uh, the because because a couple of the Superman ones, not the flashy cartoon. I was going to say, the, I was going to say, live say, action Batman serials. I, I was going to say, there's some live action Superman and the entire Flash stuff on the Superman box set on Blu-ray. Yeah. No. So I'm surprised they haven't done that with Batman yet, and gone like, here's like a complete cinematic box set of I've Batman seen stuff. Clips of it, which mm. made me kind of made me go. Because when the Batmobile was invented, like they made the Batmobile in one of them, they were like, put him in a car. 
So then Bob Kane was like, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, the, the Bat Cave originates in that. Alfred the, comes modern from... Modern Alfred. No, Alfred comes from a radio play. Yeah, Alfred. Radio serial. But then his modern design comes from the... Oh, from the... the yeah, because he was a bumbling um, fat actor, yeah, comedy exactly. character. And then they made him the the gentleman's gentleman. So that stuff might be worth tracking down. But yeah, in general, DC's animated and TV output is is way more consistent than its movies. Have you heard the rumor of a Flash Supergirl musical episode? They've not confirmed if it's happening, I don't think but they've, it. they've Grant Gustin has strongly suggested that's, that it's happening. I, I heard it was a two part as well because obviously him and uh, Melissa a, what's a, bunch, a bunch of the cast from the single you shows are from Glee. From Glee, but have you heard the rumored director and co writer of this musical special? No. Joss Whedon. Oh! <laughs> no, it's too good to be true. It's too good to be true. I don't know. I think he would say yes. It's too good to be true. I think he would say yes because I think that Greg Berlanti and all those guys would be like, hey, you know that Wonder Woman script you wrote for us back in 2008 that the film guys just went, eh, yeah, they were insane. Over at DC TV, apart from Gotham, we know what we're doing. Far from Gotham. We know what we're doing. In the Balantiverse, we know what we're doing. I want to give you a shot. And also, because I remember someone online saying, like, uh, someone from uh, from our college was talking about Facebook. They went, why? This is my idea of, like, a nightmare. This is stupid. And I really wanted to write, oh, yeah, imagine. Ima- Im- like, how the hell are they going to pull off a 45-minute episode musical about superheroes and supervillains? Oh, wait. He's done it before. Yeah. It's called Doctor Horrible. He can freaking do this. It's like, oh my god. It's like, and obviously Buffy wants more feelings as yeah. it comes to mind. Yeah. And it's like, Joss, if anyone could do it, Joss Whedon could pull it off. And he also would bring that credibility and it'd be that thing of like, hey, guess what everybody? You don't have to pick sides here. Here's the Avengers guy directing an episode of Flash and Supergirl. With singing. Because that's how this works. Oh my god. That would that would be amazing. I would love the crap out of that. And one thing they have definitely confirmed because they posted like, a picture of Boots is the four-way crossover between Arrow, Legend, Supergirl, and Flash. Which I think they're planning to do it as like a two-night thing. Like, it'd be two episodes of one on one... Uh, two episodes of two of the show. Uh, one episode... Two episodes each from two of the show. Oh, balls! I'll describe it. Four episodes over two nights. Two episodes one night, two episodes the next. I've gone cross And one would be Flash, Arrow, Legend... How the hell did you make that so Supergirl. complicated? I, I could, yeah. So, but that would be cool because then it's like it's like the old school kind of sitcom crossovers from the ABC Family Days in the nineties, where the characters would appear from one sitcom into another, and you wouldn't have to have watched them both to get it on reruns. But it'd be like, oh, cool, they went away in that one, and then they're in this one. That's well, the, cool. And that, that, that kind of led to the whole theory of all of television is just one artistic boy's fantasy. In the Carl world. Winslow is in what's the thing with Urkel? Family Tie, whichever one of those is. He's he's the father in that. Urkel who he... goes to work on the space station. Get freaking Urkel. Um, if someone touches you in a way that you don't like, that's no good. He was also Sonic, was the reference though. <laughs> but, um, oh god. Chili dog! Chili dog! But uh, he, he, what do you call it? The dad in that car, Winslow, plays the dad, who is a cop. He is also the cop in Die Hard, and he's a cop in Ghostbusters in the cell. He's the one who comes and tells him, like, and, and apparently the Ghostbusters cameo, what, Die Hard was the same year as Ghostbusters 84? Or was um, Die Hard afterwards? I'm not sure. I don't remember. The sitcom hadn't started yet. Basically, the 80s are a blur to Basically, me. one of I them one of them led to another, and then another's a coincidence, but everyone's going, what's to say he's not playing the same character in all three of them? I shot a kid. <laughs> now I'm going to go hang out with my donkey neighbour. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's probably why they're not the same character. I'm just gonna put that out there. I'd love that. Um, it's just like, I shot a kid. I shot now I'm gonna go and lock up some dudes who catch ghosts. Um, um, but going back to the light-hearted, wonderful world of superheroes, Henry Cavill's Superman, Justice League. Um, Henry Cavill yeah. is currently filming Justice League, and teased. what? But Superman's dead. When he said he was dead. He said he was dead. <laughs> Um, he said he was dead. Thanks for that, guys. We're gonna oh, use that. Beautiful. Uh, no copyright infringement intended. Um, <laughs> we love you. Um, <laughs> so, oh, um, yeah, the Henry Cavill teased the Superman black costume. Uh, by teased, I mean he just posted a, a close-up shot of part of the costume. Mm-hmm. Um, Look so, at the textures, everyone. So it's it's like it's filigreed with nonsense symbols and 
it looks like it's black on black. Now, for those who don't know what this is in reference to, in the original Death and Return of Superman, when Superman first returns, he had a black costume with no cape and with a silver S and silver cuffs, which is supposed to be re- using solar energy to recharge his cells after he's resurrected. Really, it's because it was the 90s and, and everyone wanted, to, everyone costume, wanted to be yeah. badass and extreme. Like, ba- that was when Batman was just inspired by the Tim Burton movie completely black apart yeah. from the yellow symbol and a yellow belt well that was after um, which I do quite like actually that, that was, was after, after uh, Nightfall. Nightfall yeah um, but also it was because they were like we want to look like the films man yeah exactly <laughs> also Superman had a mullet ah! at that point yeah um, they won't give out to the Cavill they won't give um, out to Cavill they should they should they should but they won't they're um, not generous enough <laughs> so but this one looks like it's black on black black on black because bla- cause oh, silver on so- black it's just not extreme enough. It's going to be black <laughs> on black. It's just like... Just like that bit in Parks and Rex where Tom's handing out a business card. <laughs> no one can read it. Because black writing on black background is the coolest font choice. Can we also just take a moment to acknowledge that this is their light-hearted... This is Zack Snyder going, Hey, there's jokes now and humour. But Superman's in a black costume with a black yeah. S. Yeah. So we're not even going to get him like returning in glorious red, blue, and dare I say it, introduce the fucking yellow. Let's have like, some yellow, please. Let's have a yellow belt and let's yellow, have please. yellow in the symbol. And we'll just be like, here's Superman. Trunks, Whatever. please. Red trunks, please. They'll never do that. Because, they're red idiots. Trunks. because the red trunks are brilliant because it insists the Circus Strongman thing and sort of it just breaks calls up back the blue. to that. It breaks like, up the blue. It breaks up the blue. Exactly. It breaks up his legs and his body. Exactly. He's just one long body man. <laughs> Hello, I'm He's, long body man. Hello, I'm Superman body man. <laughs> Hello. This is my big I'm blue body, Captain Long Body Mule. Baby. Um, I just think I I don't know. Like Jim Lee, uh, I think we said last week or was it the week before that Jim Lee said the reason he took away the trunks was to to, to streamline the design. But yeah, I just but... don't think there's anything streamlined about. There's nothing streamlined about removing, making them big and blue. Yeah, it's 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 it's. it's he just becomes, yeah, he becomes a lump. He becomes yeah. a lump of colour, and that's the biggest problem. He's a lanky streak of blue. Yeah. Um, and, and I've got to say, like, even even the Supergirl, the Supergirl TV show, the Superman they've got in that, he's got that big chunky belt. Yeah. Which is still it's sort of he- a big helps. chunky belt, but it, it sort of it you know, helps breaks break it up blue. just a bit. So it's just, you know, it, it, it makes it, um, it, it gives it a, enough of a def- definition. Yeah. Like in the middle, there is this chunk of yellow. Um, Let's briefly touch on it because we need to. Did you see that really gross uh, fake poster for Supergirl? It said Superman coming in Supergirl. No, right, I think that's a... say coming in. It's fake. Oh, it's it's been it's been outed as fake. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's Cause... it's exactly the kind of thing that a network would do and not realize. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Because they it's did like it with this... Yogi Bear. What great things come in bears? Yeah. That spectacular marketing that slogan. That amazing marketing slogan. Great things coming, bears. It's just... just the happiness on their faces. Oh, oh. But it, it, it's just this whole... Um, I don't know. I don't know. I just... Cavill isn't exciting me with this shot of an all-black costume. No. He's just making me go, great. Snyder still doesn't He's get it. He's making me go, yeah. I, I'm, I'm holding it's the, the Transformers. Going, oh, it's the no. Transformers. It's the blur of grey metals with no defining Don't colors. get me started on the Michael Bay Farmers movies. We should do a whole episode where we do a flip flop, where we talk about what is awesome about Transformers in general, like just delve into your absolute fanboy passion, and then spend the second half sl- talking about the movies. You know what? I'll actually watch all four Bay Farmers movies for that. Would you do it? Well, I've already seen the first. Maybe movie. those should be our commentary. And I've seen we've, been, we've been talking. We're doing commentaries. Maybe they should be our first commentary. I've seen half of the third one. Oh, why would you? Do and that let me say? tell you, I got I got to the big battle scene at the end of the third one, which is what, which is what everyone liked about it. Mm. Everyone hated the rest of the movie, but then like this is an amazing action sequence, which is like the last half of the movie. <laughs> I got to that, and by that point, I was just so battered by the sexism and casual mm. racism and misogynism on display that I just couldn't do it. Do you know, I, I've, I've only seen... Age of Extinctions on Netflix. I'm out watching Age of Extinction today just to see what it's like. Oh, don't do that to yourself on your day off. You feel Mark horrible. Mark, though. You were the, I think we found a Transformer. I think we found a Transformer, yeah! I, I watched the first one during the... like It was sort of like a quiet house party years ago. It was like 2008, 2009. And in the early hours, a couple of us were still awake. We sat in a hammock in the garden. And then we were like, should we watch the film or something? Yeah, and we watched Transformers. And I fell asleep in the last third. Because I was knackered. And I've, I've no desire to watch it since. And then uh, I you and I, you and I saw one. the second one. 
I'm and... surprised you've ever forgiven me for it because it's dreck. Oh well, I had put it this way. I think it's that was. I think dreck. I think that was the first time where I was old enough to like not have the buzz in my head of yay cinema. This was fun. Yeah. Like where I looked and I went wow, and we discussed afterwards at length what everything was freaking wrong with it. Because before that, as a kid, I knew the Star Wars prequels weren't good. By the time Attack of the Clones came around, like, 11-year-old me was like, these aren't very good. Like, the older ones are much better. But it was Transformers 2 that made me go, I don't have to enjoy my time at the cinema, but I can have fun discussing what we've watched. Well, put it this way. (laughs) With the prequels that you mentioned, I was 11 when The Phantom Menace came out. (laughs) So I saw that three times at the cinema. Yeah, you're a perfect age for it. And I loved it. Yeah. Then Attack of the Clones came out, and I was like, this is okay. But me and my mate were, were massive Star Wars heads. Yeah. So we saw it twice. And then Revenge of the Sith came out and I was 17. Hmm. That was it. And I saw it three times. Oh no. But it was definitely diminishing returns of being, being like, I'm just sitting through this movie to get the lightsaber fight at the end. Uh, all you're doing And this Anakin cool. stuff is terrible. And then when it, they all came out on DVD, I don't think every time I watch any one of those prequels, I'm just like, it's gotten worse. <laughs> it's gotten worse since the last time. Particularly, it's, my days of Attack of the Clones has not aged well. It has not aged well at all. No, it hasn't. It's, oh, so yeah, it. I think those... Um, Clones is the worst one. I'll, I'll put it out there. But I think... Oh, yeah. Hands down. Everyone, everyone, everyone always rails on Menace, but Clones is the worst. It's barely a film. Like, Phantom Menace is, is boring, but it's functional. Mm. It's a functional movie. And at least has enough sort of set pieces for you to turn your brain off and go, okay. Yeah. It's, right. it's, yeah. it's badly plotted, <laughs> and it's boring, but it it makes sense. Yeah. It's coherent. Um, it is a film. <laughs> um, so there is that. But... Um, yeah, so I think what you've got, probably got now is you've got because those Transformers movies make bank. Mm. Serious bank. So you must have that legion of 11, 12 year olds. Yeah. Who want to see them. Being fed all this misogynist, sexist tripe. Lapping it up. Going home and playing COD. Yeah. And then, but then are they going to grow at that? Or are they going to be man children forever? Because it's, it's not because the first it's movie possibly came out, creating a generation of arseholes. Two thousand seven. It's nearly a decade of, of Bay Farmers movies. But the kids who would have been excited for those ones, maybe they'll grow out of it by number five. Like maybe number we'll five see. will make we'll them go. Out, yeah. it's the last night. I just don't <laughs> like. Not those movies don't have anything that I I think is also about transforming in them. What are you That's talking about, bro? It's got hot chicks. That's what Transformers yeah, has always, always been about. Been about hot chicks. It's always. always been about hot chicks. Do you not remember Transformers? It's just all about metal grinding against metal. Oh, it's, it's so sex. cool, bro. Just go and play Transformers Devastation. That's all you need to do. Because that's pretty great. Speaking of play, uh, in the world of DC still. Sorry, oh. with a slightly more positive DC. In the Arkhamverse, uh, we have got a new trailer has dropped for Arkham VR. Um, when we say trailer, what we mean is a couple bits of footage of the actual VR, which is good. It's nice to actually just see like what it's like. Game. Yeah. But... Uh, it's mostly people at San Diego Comic Con talking about How great what it was like is. playing it. Uh, I do remember one of the one of the reviews of it from San Diego. Someone was talking about how it wasn't San Diego, was it? Oh it no, the, 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 these these sound bites were from San Diego. These were from San Diego. But it was E3 the first was when the press at E3. That was when that was when some yeah. people did write ups of the bit they played. Yeah. They talked about how like you walk into the library in Wayne Manor or whatever, and you do a little combo on the piano, and the whole piano works. Like one person who played piano play the tune on it for a minute and then was like oh yeah I should probably do the thing and they sort of played the combo keys they needed and then you sank down a, a, the hole into the back cave um, which is kind of nice I like the idea that there's multiple entrances and stuff uh, but like seeing that is like oh that's what they were talking about that's cool and it just looked like it would be a fun experience but I think that's what it is I think it would be it would be something I would pay to play at a festival I'm going to be interested to see how much they charge for it yeah, I, especially because the what the goggles are what three hundred and fifty. I think they'd be incredibly sensible. Around if if, if the goggles are going to be that price, I think it'd be incredibly sensible for Sony to have like a set price for the hour long ish. Well, the, go- the uh, goggles... VRs at like sort of maybe 
twenty quid maximum. They've got. I think that's a bit steep. It's still steep, but they've got to. They've got to get. They've got to make that money because they've got to wait until more. The if mm, Can we see how much the goggles are. Maybe maybe they could maybe they could play it if they make it. So it's like all right. Say all right. Let's say fourteen ninety nine. Yeah, for the yeah. VR experience, fourteen ninety nine for a VR game. Because then enough word of mouth will spread to sell more goggles, and after that they can make longer games and they can move it up to twenty pounds, mm. which would make more sense. I, th- I think if you were getting a two hour game, I think twenty would be twenty wouldn't be too uh, too out there if it's like a two hour game. I mean, the whole thing of, of price versus length is a difficult argument, yeah. anyway, but I personally wouldn't spend twenty pounds on something I'm only going to play for two hours unless it's got an incredible story. Yeah. And and I, think, I, think, I think with the Arkham one, it's probably going to be a case of... Because they've said that it's set earlier in the timeline. Even though the mystery that it's apparently about sounds a bit like it would screw up continuity, which is why I think there's more to it than the base level. Yeah, I don't um, think it can... Uh, yeah. Plus they've said it's earlier in the timeline, which means that... Because um, Hamill's Joker is in the original teaser, isn't he? Like, voiceover. So yeah. I, th- it, I think it's probably set somewhere just before Asylum or whatever. Because uh, the suit, the suit that we see, uh. is the one you're wearing, um, at the very beginning of Arkham Knight, which is is referred to as the Arkham City suit. It's it's a more updated one for the HD graphics, yeah. But it's it's basically that suit with sort of a bit more pad, sort of leather lining sort of thing going on. So I think this must be set pre Arkham Asylum, um. But apparently, it's about investigating the murder of Nightwing. And I'm like, well, that doesn't happen because he's in city and night. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see where they're going with that. It can't happen. Um, it's also weird that we didn't really get any Dick Grayson Robin in the Arkhamverse. Like he's, yeah. he's in multiplayer in Origins, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, that is strange. But um, I mean, I've not played the multiplayer in Origins. We should we should do a bit of that. Oh, why would you punish yourself like that? Well, these trophies, isn't there? That's um, you, you, you absolute trophy whore. You're a trophy wench, you know that, Watson? <laughs> well, I'm looking at Amazon... <laughs> I am. How much, how much the Sony uh, Glau sells? 359 pounds. Yeah, alright. Meant, meant the game's a tenner and then up the um, price over time. As time goes thing, by, knock the price up. The only thing I can see... There's a, whole, there's a bunch of stuff like... There's a bunch of the VR stuff up for pre-order. Hustle Kings, which is a pool game, is up for pre-order for £14. Pounds. PlayStation VR Worlds, which looks like a... Uh, Sorry, a pool game. Puzzle Kings. So after you've... Uh, that's fi- £15. Pounds. F- £14. Pounds. Okay, let's, let's, ra- let's round to 15 say that the goggles are three fifty. So that's £375 pounds for a VR headset a VR pool. and a VR pool. Yeah. You could probably buy yeah. a pool table for yeah. 200 yeah. quid, 250 quid. What else have you got? You've got... Um... I, I mean, that is... Re- I, would, I will buy a pool table right now. I will buy a goddamn pool table. Riggs Mechanized Combat League is £40. Pounds. But that's... That seems like a full game. Yeah, that's like a full campaign. Kind um, of Until Dawn, Rush of Blood, which look, which from what I know of it is like an on rail shooter set thing. in the world of Until Dawn. Set in the world of Until, like with like a roller coaster carnival thing. That's fourteen ninety nine. So that's probably something that you can play multiple times and get different results. But, but it's going to be like probably what an hour. Yeah, at most. I think that's I think that's fine for launch prices. Like that's not I would, bad. Uh... I just I'm not. I, I love the Arkhamverse. I absolutely adore it. I, I, I mean, you you freaking... You know what my office is like. One wall is almost entirely stuff from Arkham. Yeah. And I really enjoy that world. But you ain't going to buy... If but I'm not going to spend... Yeah. I'm not, goggles I will for... watch someone play yeah. well, you won't be the able VR to version. Oh, someone will find a way to stream it. I will watch someone play the VR version before I buy the goggles and the VR thingy. Unless you turn around to me and you said, okay... It's a couple of years after released Arkham VR. What we're doing now is we're releasing a new version. It's like a five hour long campaign plus the original version included. If, if you did that, if after a couple of years and the goggles obviously will naturally go down in price over that time as well, then I'd probably go, okay, bring it on. It's one of those things. The, the things that would get me to, to pick up PlayStation VR are one, games. Mm. Uh, at the moment, none of the PlayStation VR stuff interests None of them are grabbing you. Beyond, like, um, fairground amusement. Certainly level. not for the 350 quid investment. No, 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 no. Two, a price drop. Serious price drop. Which is only going to happen when they start selling. And three, a bundle of the PlayStation Neo. 
which is apparently getting announced next month right. properly. Although we already know pretty much everything about it and the VR goggles. Yeah, so we came so if, so if it was like the new Connect, yeah, kind of. Except on like Connect, it looks like there are still plans to do things for this because it's brand new. Yeah, like all well, VR is making a big splash on PC, so it makes sense for the consoles to have a solution as well. Although the PS4 is already underpowered compared to PCs that can run uh, VR stuff, so the scope of VR, what you can do with VR on a console is limited because of that. But hey, 350, that's a bargain, right? Compared to the Rift and the Vive, yeah, yeah. It's, a hell of, it's a hell of a smaller buy-in. And, um, <laughs> and then you look at the fact that the PlayStation Neo is out probably by the end of the year. We'll know for certain soon. That's going to be more powerful, but it's not going to, you're not going to be able to run anything on the PlayStation Neo that you can't run on the PlayStation 4. Right. That's one of the developer uh, requirements. Yeah. You can't, re- you can't release anything that can only run on PlayStation Neo. You can't have any features that are PlayStation Neo exclusive that aren't in the PlayStation 4 version of the game. You can do things like have... So um, anything released for Neo has to be something that could be played on standard PS4. Yeah. But it has so, to have a Neo mode. Oh, which Christ. will take advantage of the I don't know, horsepower. Okay. As such. Which I really want them to implement Fallout 4 because <laughs> god damn that game chugs sometimes. I'm going to put you on the PS4. Chug, 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 chug. chug. Some of the, loading, the loading times are abysmal. Um, but I don't know. what the, the PS... Sony are doing some interesting things right now. And the whole console market is moving towards a more incremental upgrade cycle similar to smartphones. Yeah. A lot of consumer hardware is going that way. So... But Arkham VR, from what we've seen of it, is not the... Uh, it's not... It ain't gonna be a killer app. It isn't. It isn't. It isn't the console seller. No, absolutely not. The, absolutely that sort not. of you would expect, like with launch titles. It's not like the launch title that's gonna get you a headset. I mean, the, the perfect example of that is, I adore those games, even when they're terrible. I love them. I'm not buying an, a VR headset so I can play Arkham VR. No, I, I have no intention. To it do could that. be worse. It could be Arkham Origins VR. Oh, 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 because then, then it wouldn't work. Um. <laughs> So there's that. However, something that does look like it's working, and the more I see of it, the more I'm, I'm on board, uh, because they're emphasising less on these weird armors and more on the characters and the interactions and the moves. Injustice Two. I've been, I've been playing the app again lately because when my laptop went down last week, I was using my tablet a lot, and I was like, "Oh, go on the Injustice app," and so much has been updated. They've added Injustice Two characters oh, already, so yeah, like cool. you're getting like Aquaman from Injustice Two and things like that. And it's like, "Oh, okay, that's quite cool." Um, so even that, they're sort of teasing. Things that are to come. So um, yeah, I've had a mobile game in. Uh, I've, I've deleted my feature file. Wow, really? Yeah. What's happened so to I'm you? I'm spending too much goddamn time on it. Oh, fair enough. Okay. So like, do ten timeline battles, and then do five story missions, and then do five, then do two daily battles, and then do you want to you want to come do a bunch of special missions, and then do your villain sieges for the day, and don't forget to do your alliance battle. Oh, and, and uh, mention rift, and you shit yourself. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, we oh, didn't let you go to the bathroom. You shit yourself. It's three in the morning. Um, God. Oh fuck! Uh, so I deleted that, but yeah, and, and I played around with Injustice, but both Injustice and Mortal Kombat X, the mobile version, and mm. Constant Champions, they're all fairly fun, like sort of beat 'em up yeah. games. But they're, 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 they're that I just don't. I, they, don't they don't have enough depth to keep me coming back. No, I I like them mostly for like the online challenges and the char- yeah. the character trials is why I tend to go back to yeah. them every now and again. It's so you you play really hard to. I would complete, like, complete to... like these fifty battles. By the end of it, you get a character you can only get by doing that. Like this week alone, because I had so many points racked up from previous versions, um, I've I've won Suicide Squad Harley Quinn and Suicide Squad Joker. Like, oh, you poor poor man. Yeah, well, no, they come with really cool bonuses, and I also got enough uh, of these exclusive points to buy Killing Joke Joker, which is him in the uh, the holiday outfit, like the Hawaiian shirt. And everything. Yeah, yeah. And what's nice about him is he's got a move that's called like uh, Last Laugh or something like that. Where if you kill him, and this is why I put him in my online team as the, my first player, if you kill him, your other two characters instantly get their entire power meters filled. Oh, that's good. So if you start the fight with him, and it's a particularly tough fight, the moment he dies, I'm like, right, well, here comes my Superman. Let's do his fully, like, stocked up main move and take out the other opponent. It's like, get it? My um, most very Superman. Most, most all the Supermans. My veriest of all the veriest. 
<laughs> the new character trailer for Justice Two revealed um, Deadshot, who is a new addition. Who's a new addition? You speculate may replace Deathstroke, which we hope that is the case because otherwise. Two Blue, very, Be- very Blue Beetle's going to be Cyborg and yeah. Cyborg going to also be Cyborg and same with Deathstroke and Deadshot. Uh, so it'd be nice to it'd be nice to shake it up a bit. Like, that's yeah. how you shake up the lineup, but without removing say if a player really likes playing as Deadshot uh, as Deathstroke, you have a similar character power set with Deadshot. Mm. So it, it's just like it's a new character fulfilling that role. Um, which is good. And obviously you can have more signature moves and the storyline can be different. You're not having to limit it to like, oh, all the same people we had last time getting involved with the story. Um, I mean, not everyone came. Oh, sorry, not everyone came forward into Mortal Kombat X from Mortal Kombat Nine. No, no. A lot of new characters, and a lot of people didn't return. Uh, not just for storyline reasons either. They're returning with this one, Harley Quinn, with a pretty freaking cool design. Yeah, her, the she's, costume she's, she's they like a biker it. outfit, like yeah. well, like a proper biker she's outfit. Got like, actual pants, pants, boots, jacket. She's got like a bit, she's of, showing a bit, little bit of midriff, bit of midriff, bit of midriff cleavage, but not like not not yeah. excessive. Uh, she's got like the new 52 slash Suicide Squad movie kind of hair thing where yeah. it's like the blonde hair with the tints and everything. Mm-hmm. Face, very expressive. Like I like, I freaking love Some the, the, the animation on this is, is really nice. Um, Tara Strong, not overplaying it, which is nice for yeah, what's so far. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll come on to that a little bit later. Yeah, um, in a moment. Um, but yeah, it's looking good. The moves are nice. Like Harley's move isn't just her doing Joker stuff. Like she's got um, what they call, I can't remember what they call the hyenas. It's like Larry and Moe or something, isn't uh, it? Yeah, I can't remember. Like either. she's got the two hyenas. Great idea for like a super move, like a the, the special move. Yeah. Like, looks good, man. I'm getting excited. I'm, I'm intrigued to know what the story is because obviously, and again, like, story but like the, the 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 winning factor of injustice other than you can have the dc heroes and villains have a fight was oh we've kind of come up with a good reason and the campaign will be interesting enough and well written enough that you, you sort of go oh cool right. good reason and well written <laughs> uh jeff johns wrote it and it was pretty solid and everything green arrow said was freaking brilliant it was an elseworld story Tied into it was a your your obvious parallel universe storyline. So you're you're right there, Bobcat Goldthwait. Um, so, <laughs> but I'm I, I'm intrigued. They've not revealed. They've not said anything about story for this so far. Because there isn't one. No, but I hope there is because it would be really. That's, 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 that's the story. I, the the only implication we've seen so far is there's been mention of this Superman being the tyrannical Superman yeah. from the last one, which means the story is either set in that universe or he's escaped from the or universe. he's escaped to like another one. Or... Also Deadshot says sick. different Harley saying crazy. Yeah, which, which implies that, that this, this is the Harley from a different Harley. This is a Harley without a joke of a look of it. So this is a Harley from the alternate universe. Maybe, maybe because the, the Harley in the main universe was the abused Joker obsessed one. Uh, in in the start of the game with the set with the bomb, yeah, um, and she doesn't follow through. She's not the Harley we spend the story with. She's just in the beginning in in the, in the cinematics. So it would imply maybe this is the Harley from that dimension who's come across as part of the story. But we'll see. I really like the look of it. I like the fact that some of the locations from the last one were, were in like there's a Gotham Street location that is similar to the one from the first game but different enough. So it's almost like going, hey, this is what we can do now. Mm. Like look at these environments. I'm excited, man. I'm looking forward. I to think it. it'll be good. I hope it'll be good. It looks good. I think the armor's overkill, but I think they put that in the first trailer to go, look at this! And it's, again, it's come out that that's more a thing that you can choose to use. You can choose to use the armors. Mm. Like, it's not just like, look at all this stuff I've got! Um, so, yeah. Speaking of Harley Quinn. Uh, Harleen Quinzel. Harleen Quinzel. This week, uh, a certain movie clown uh, got an update and was revealed. And it got us thinking about clowns. And we'll get to him. In a little while. We'll get to that. But with Harley being in this new Injustice trailer, I thought, let's have a chat. Because last week we talked we talked a lot about Joker and Harley Quinn, but we talked about the Suicide Squad Joker and Harley yeah, Quinn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just wanted to talk about them as clowns. Let, let's talk about clowns. And these guys are clowns. The Joker's a clown. He's a murderous clown. I've been rereading some of his first stories this past week. He's just a scary looking mobster man. Like, he's a, he's a serial killer who dresses like a well-to-do gangster who happens to look like a freaking scary clown. I'm a scary clown. He murders people. Joker Venom is in the first story. It's freaking scary, man. The clown, the clown motif is is the most central thing to the Joker's character. And 
taking it away and just starting it like Suicide Squad is kind of misses the fucking point. Um, <clears throat> I read Mad Love for the first time this week. D- let, sorry, I need to just I need to drop something in shock. Um, got a brush. A what? Um, <laughs> Tim Allen's got in again. <laughs> Get out, Tim. Get go. out. Get back to your home, Tim. Go play your confusing SNES game that for some reason had you fighting dinosaurs. Oh, get him off me. Get Tim off me. Oh, God, that was, that was terrifying. Oh, Tim. Um, poor Tim. Poor sweet innocent poor Tim. Tim. He will rise again with the moon. Um, so I... <laughs> I read Mad Love for the first time. I am so shocked you hadn't read it before. Uh, I hadn't read it before. Uh, well, I'm kind of on a, a a fix of going back and reading like the big Batman stories. I read The Killing Joke a couple of weeks back for the first time. Um, finally read Mad Love. Well, Mad Love and other stories, as the as the collection's called. It's yes. actually it's actually a really great collection, like to as an introduction to Batman's Rose Gallery. Yeah, because there's Mad Love and there's a couple of Joker and Harley stories. There's a really great Two Face story. There's the Roxy Rocket stuff. Yes, it's all Bruce Lee and Paul Dini, so it's all set in the it's the set in the Batman animated series. series. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there's well because it's the comic, they can get away with a little bit more as yeah. well. And oh yeah, yeah, just... yeah. They get away with some surprisingly racy stuff, <laughs> not just in Mad Love, in some of the other stories as well. Um, what are you a... talking about Mad Love is completely family friendly. Do you want to rev up your Harley? Room, <laughs> room. There's a Batgirl. Oh no, no. If I remember story. correctly, in the book, doesn't she say do you want to ride your Harley? No, she said rev up. Oh, and Ride was the original line, and they were asked, uh, can you change that, please? No, it wasn't the line they asked us to change. It was the pose. Oh, okay. Was she yeah. a little more provocative? Yeah, it, 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 was, no, no, it was just, she was just sitting different, and I think she was sitting with the legs forward. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. she was sort of sitting, sitting on her backside with the legs forward rather than, like, kneeling. <laughs> um, and so she was sitting like that, they asked her to change it. But the, that whole sequence is, like, really pushing the edge of what you can get away with, because she's wearing that negligee. Yeah. Which is red, but see-through. Like, you see the outline of her body underneath it. And yeah. She's clearly not wearing anything else. But that's what, that's what Bruce Tim likes to draw. He likes to draw him. Well, the, 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 the Batgirl Clayface story in it. Yeah. Origin, the, there's a sequence in it where she ducks into a cha- changing room. She's in the yes! Batgirl. She ducks into a changing room and she, and she changes the Batgirl. She comes out. Originally, he drew that sequence where they're getting changed in the middle of the crowd as everyone's rushing around her. Yeah. And the BTs were like, no, you cannot do that. You cannot show Barbara Gordon in her underwear. I mean, you still kind of see bits well, of you see bits of her unclothed in her changing in the changing room. Not, but it, but yeah. it's not it's not like provocative. It's not like look at her sexy back girl. And to be fair, the original the It's original playing scene. on the comedy that she's in a changing room, not trying on an outfit, she's putting on her superhero. The original outfit. sequence wasn't particularly provocative, but I can see why DC were like, Yeah, they were like she's getting much. naked in public, man. You can't do that. Yeah, but um but it's a great collection of stories. I mean, you can get yeah, Mad Love really, really in several volumes now. There, there is one. There's a book called Harley Quinn, which is a compilation of stories, and they've included yeah. Mad Love in that now as well. But I would um, definitely plus you can up. buy it separately as part of a, a one-off long issue too. But yeah, I, I agree. Pick up Mad Love and other stories. It's really good because it, it's it's just it's amazing. Most of them are written by Paul De, uh, Paul Dini. I think it's, it's, it's all like Paul Dini. Paul Dini. Mostly Bruce Tim stuff. There is yeah, the... and, and there's, there's some of the comics are illustrated not by Bruce Tim, but they're in the Bruce Tim animated series style. So yeah, it's it's there that is overall look. There is the one that with Etrigan the Demon, which is done as a tribute to Jack Kirby yes. as well, where uh, Ra- Rachel Ghoul is doing the incantation, and of course in, in DC Ink, all magic is words backwards. Yeah, so you're reading the the balloons backwards, and he's like Kirby was king and all that stuff. There's also a little. <laughs> Easter eggs and there were balloons and it's because uh, of course Jack can be great at and that's why the balloons are introduced him. Um, it's a really cool volume, but the st- obviously the star of the book is Mad Love, which is a really really great story. It's so good, it's, isn't it? It just gives so <laughs> much depth to Harley as a character in her. Just. The way she just gets taken apart by the Joker, like mm. it, 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 on a mental level, yeah, and you just he he puts himself inside her head so easily. I mean, it's in, it's it's also made clear in the story that she's not a particularly good psychologist. Oh no, well, and like, she like, sleeps she's, her she's, way through. She's smart. Yeah, yeah. Well, she, yeah she she she's good at 
what she does, but she doesn't use that to get ahead. She sleeps with people, she flirts with people, yeah. and ultimately she's not doing it because she wants to help people. She's, she's doing, doing it because she wants to get famous. She wants yeah. to get famous. She wants to see Gotham super criminals and write about, oh, yes, yeah. I, I helped cure Two-Face, and you know I sat down with the Riddler and all this. So at the moment she gets access to the Joker, it's like, what? But he just he just crawls inside a head and tate and, and starts driving straight away. Um, oh, that, my... Because cause, cause here's the thing, like, so you hadn't read it before. You were no. fully aware of the story. Yeah, yeah. But you hadn't read it, and you hadn't seen the animation. I hadn't seen the animation. Because it was, it was written as a as a Deaniverse story. Yeah. And published in the Batman... Adventures of Batman? Or Batman uh, Adventures? Batman, Batman Adventures, yeah. Batman Adventures. Like that, yeah. Then it was... Then that was, like, adapted into an episode of what... A, what was the Batman the, the continuation series, of the animated series yeah. yeah by that point it had become uh, the new Batman, the new Batman, Batman Adventures. Adventures yeah with the redesigned Joker without the red lips which I've always found really weird yeah well the, the, their idea their, their, the explanation they've always had for that is he's like a shark which it, which makes sense but he's a clown but so he why are you making him look like a shark yeah, he's a freaking clown it's again it's like you take the clown away from him you can't him. imagine that version of him dressing up as Jekko like you can't imagine that stuff well, from you, the you earlier seasons you do get the doc- you do get the dentist yeah, oh, that's bad. Um, well, this is terrible. Everything has to go. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's so good. Oh, God. But, again, the anime adaptation, you get the joy of hearing Arlene Sorkin and Kevin Conroy yeah. and Mark Hamill delivering these lines. Um, and but it, was, also, it was really nice to go back and listen to Arlene Sorkin's Harley. Yeah. Having played so much Arkham and listening to Tara Strong's Harley. Mm. Who can be fine, but, but she just a lot of the time she plays it as the surface level dumb bits and all yeah, that. I've not played Night yet. But having listened She's she's to better in Night, but there is some there is some grating in there. there City, City, particularly the Harley Quinn Revenge DLC, can be a bit much mm. Tara Also doesn't help also doesn't on. help that, that wasn't very well written, the DLC. No. It, it was it was Rocksteady's staff's First, no, it's not Rocksteady. Set, it's one of the Montreal staff yeah. writing, which they then did in places around Jeff Johns' main script for the story in Origins. Jeff Johns wrote the story of Origins and then the the dialogue in all the cutscenes. But a lot of the other stuff was written by Montreal, who fine. also wrote the yeah. dialogue for uh, the Batgirl DLC for Arkham Knight, which is by far the worst story portion. You can, it's unforgivable the Red Hood and Harley Quinn stuff because it's short and tiny and pointless. But like it's short and tiny and pointless. Batgirl has a story and it's a terrible story. Uh, although Starro is hidden somewhere in that section, it's really... <laughs> when, you, when you find it, you find it in like a in like a tank in the Wait, aquarium part of the Starro, carnival. the Conqueror. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's uh, freaking yeah. great. It's such a great Easter egg. But um, yeah, Harley Quinn is Arlene Sorkin's Harley Quinn. Yeah. Because she literally Paul Dini came up with the character. And when he was thinking about casting her, he was in, I can't remember what sitcom she was in, but she's in a sitcom, and in a dream sequence in one episode, she's dressed as a Harlequin. And he just remembered that, and he was like, oh my god, I've got to ask Arlene, who he'd become friends with. He was like, I'm yeah. going to ask her to play this character. Because originally she was just, he was like, oh, let's give the Joker a, a mall. Let's give her him a mob mall. Let's give him like a, a girl who dotes on him. But let's make her... I can't. Let's make her a clown, and let's make her steal his punchline. They sort of said, it'd be funny if occasionally she gets the punchline, and the men laugh at her and it pisses him off because we can have the Joker be angry. You know what I mean? That'd be quite funny. I'd be like, Ur. which is the. It was never meant to be a complex relationship no. at first. It was meant to just be more. This would be fun. There's... No one's done this. Let's do this. Um, and then people really liked her, mm. so they kept putting her in, and they kept writing her in. It was oh god, I love, I love that. Um, and the trial, for example, like they they, they were they were obviously a couple at this point because they're flirting. Yeah. Have you seen the Have you seen the trial? It's an amazing uh, episode. Basically, the new DA and Batman are both kidnapped and put on trial in a mock courtroom in Arkham by the inmates. So Joker's the judge. Oh, no, that's not Two Face is the um oh what's it called? Not the defense. not the defence, the prosecution. Yeah. Um there's no defence. <laughs> oh no, then the the DA the DA is made to be the defence for Batman. Oh okay. and like the uh the, the, the jury are like Wesker and uh Ivy and Croc, and it's just like, this is basically their toy, they're going to kill Batman, essentially, yeah. but they're going through a trial to prove a point, and Harley and the Joker, like, at one point, like, they're trying to get the Joker's attention, and him and Harley are basically just like going, like, sort of being old coochie-coo. I think by that point, they've gone, yeah, these two are a couple, like, why yeah. not? 
there's a freaking brilliant bit in that when Harley gets hold of the uh, DA. For, I think it's get hold of the DA. It's taken away. But she's disguised as a... And this, she's called Harley and Quinzel, but at this point they hadn't decided she was a psychiatrist and that was her real name. Yeah. They're obviously calling her Harley and Quinzel because it makes you who watches the animated series go, oh, that's Harley Quinn. Like, but she basically takes someone away from Bullock and it's like, uh, she's like do I know you? I, I think it might be in the trial. It's one of those episodes. Yeah. Another area. She goes, I think I served you a subpoena once. She walks away and she turns back and goes, it was a small subpoena. <laughs> she keeps walking. It's like... Oh my god, they are having so much fun with this psychic they character. Got... She's great. And then Paul Dini obviously thought, I've got a story yeah. I want to tell. I want to... We've we've made them a sort of couple. Let's tell that story. And that's mm. Mad Love. And the thing is, he gets in her head because he opens up to her. And tells her about his father abusing him as a child and all this stuff. But which is a story he's told to... Which, when Batman later yeah. on, he says, which one was it? Yeah. Like, what did he win you over with? Was it the story about the ice skating? Was it the story about the carnival? Like, no, he's talking about the no it, 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 he asked if it was if it was the story about the abusive father yeah. or the runaway mother. Yeah. And he gets a lot of sympathy with that one. The one parole officer. He told one parole officer that he took, that, 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 she took, that he took him to the ice show when he was seven. Mm. And then Harley goes, he told me it was the circus. She's in mm. tears by that point. Yeah. And it's... Um, but in one moment, yeah. her entire fantasy of it this dude who opened... She, uh, she got the clown to take off his makeup, yeah. so to speak. And she understands him better than anyone else. And it's all a lie. It's like Batman says, he had you pegged for hired help as soon as you walked in. It's yeah. amazing. Like It's absolutely amazing. And it sums up their relation, relationship brilliantly. Yeah. Um and the, and the fact that by the end of it she's like I mean he throws her out of a window yeah because he she nearly succeeds she finds nearly a way to make them. one of his crazy schemes better yeah and like oh the, the freaking death by a death of a thousand smiles mm. they're basically dropping him in a tank full of piranhas and he was like he never got it to work he tried he tried joker toxin on them and it just killed them and it never worked so she turns Batman upside down so that the piranhas are smiling but if you have to explain it, it's not a joke. Yeah, and that's why the joker's pissed off about it. Um, and it's like, oh my god, just... Yeah, it's really... Oh, it's so good! And she she leaves him. She decides at the end, she's like, I'm going to leave him. And she's beaten up, and she's taken back to Arkham after she's been seen to by the medics. And there's a jar with a flower on it, and a note from Jay. And she instantly slips back into this yeah. old... It's like, it's like post-hypnotic suggestion at this point. It's like she's in a trance and she's never coming out of it. Her Stockholm Syndrome is part of her DNA now. Yeah. And that's why she's such a tragic and interesting character. Yeah, it's, you it's feel not... bad for her, but at the same time, like you love seeing them be criminals because they're obviously having an absolute blast. But then when the crime finishes, you're like, okay, no, get out of there now. Get, get out of there now. Yeah. Get out of there, Harley. Harley, get out of there. Get out of there, Harley. Get out just, of there. Just wanting, knowing that she, especially, and it, like they say, they really play it later when mm. she joins the Gotham City Sirens and she's yeah. tying like, the There are stories to and, tell where she yeah. goes on her yeah. own, goes off on her own. There are stories to tell there. Like but she, I, I almost think that you finish it there now. She shouldn't be dressed as Harley Quinn anymore. No. I mean, like some people say, some people argue like, well, look, because that's her saying, you don't own me, I own me. I make my choices, but you're still dressed as a clown. Well, dressed is a strong word. Yeah. I'm wondering that. Well, yeah, I'm thinking more sirens, but yeah. well, she's still in the body stocking. But, but yeah, it's... it's. But anyway, let's forget the future for a minute. Just mad love. Freaking great. Mad and love. hearing those words yeah. with those actors is just yeah, so it's great. It's really good stuff. It's, it's definitely towards the top end of how good the animated series ever got. Mm. And in terms of in terms of the comics, I'm like it, it's it's one of the essential stories. I think. I yeah. mean, I think Mad Love and other stories is, a, is an essential Batman volume because mm-hmm. even though it's not in main DC continuity, it gives you such a Cause clear yeah. idea of who so many of these mm-hmm. villains are. Like, there's a great ventriloquist story in yes. there. There's a great Scarecrow story. The Scarecrow story is fabulous. The, where he's um, he's gone he's gone straight and gone back to teaching. And then he has he has a student that he has a really good relationship with, and he just starts shooting a one on one. And then it's implied she gets raped. Yeah. Um, but again, kids they comic. Yeah, they so don't, they're not they gonna don't say it. it. They, 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 she goes on a date with a with a dude, and, and he does something. So it's implied that she's raped. Mm. And at which point he goes full on scarecrow on this dude. 
Um, it's like he almost got out of it finally. He yeah. almost became a compassionate person. And then in an act of compassion, he completely reverts back. Yeah. And it's just like, oh my, well, this, that brings me to, I'll touch on this very briefly because we, we need, I want to talk about Joker and Harley, but there's a Batman Black and White, which is a fucking excellent series. Yeah, I don't know Black and White. If you, if you, oh, I'll have to lend you some, man. It's amazing. If, if you've ever, if, you, if you're familiar with the world of Batman and you, you know that world and you know the characters and you just want to see different authors and different artists have a stab at sort of themes or daft ideas. Yeah. Black and White is a series of, of books. They're, they're now books and everything proper, but it was a comic. And each comic had like four short stories in it, three or four short stories. In volumes, it means you've got like 20 stories in each one. Mm. And they were in like the late, I think it was like mid to late 90s. And then they did a volume about three years ago. And that yeah. one is just as good as anything from the old ones. It's so good. Yeah. But one of the stories from an earlier one, and it's called Black and White because they're all the minimalist. It's just the artist and the writer. And they make it. And that's it. I don't. Know if the, I think. I think the artists ink it as well. Some of them have inkers, but there's always just two names. Like these are the two people who made it. Mm-hmm. They got together and made the short story. Uh, and you've got people like you know Jim Lee and Frank Miller does one, and Neil Adams does a brilliant one that's sort of talking about Batman's how helpless Batman is. It's like this endless crusade. Like really, he's never going to make a change, and it's depicted as this zombie. Like he's like a zombie shuffling through Gotham, and it's just—it's such a really fun little volume. There's an amazing one which I think I might be wrong. I think it's written by Neil Gaiman uh, or Grant Morrison. It's one of those two because it's it's nuts. Grant where, Morrison's was nice. Where Batman, Batman and the Joker are sat in the waiting room after they've been fitted for their costumes and everything, <laughs> ready to go and do today's strip, but there's a delay, and it's just these two people talking to each other, <laughs> and it, it's not like it's not two people playing Batman and the Joker. It's yeah. Batman and the Joker in the waiting room, ready to go in and shoot their scenes. Yeah. Air quotes. It's such a great, like, little story. But there's this brilliant one by Bruce Tim, written and drawn by Bruce Tim, which is a story of Harvey Dent being cured, getting plastic surgery and falling in love with his doctor that's, who cures him. That's in Mad Love. Yeah, they put it in there as well. Oh, they colour it, they no, it, don't they? they no, no, it's... it's oh, is it black it's and white? Sound. Yeah. It's amazing it's done. Story, because yeah. it's very adult. Because basically, he falls in love with a woman... And she has a twin sister, yeah, and yeah. it's this whole two sides of the coin thing. Like she is, she really is, she is them. like yeah. the, she's the she's the incarnation of everything that is beautiful and right with people, like of good. Yeah. And her sister is an ass, a dickhead. Bad, and she bad. sleeps around, and she's a she's criminal. I think I mean, yeah. mentioned criminal intent, and she tries to get Harvey to sleep with her and stuff. And she and, does, and she does, and they have an affair, and then they get and then they get married right to the good sister, and then she kills mm-hmm. the, the, yeah. she kills a good sister because she's like no I want to be with you like it's not just sex without saying that but it's yeah. like I want to be with you so he freaking looks into the fireplace knowing this is too, I've, it's too late I've got to go back mm-hmm. like it, it, the, the coin has flipped again and he grabs the coals in the fireplace and just throws them into his face yeah. And then it cuts to her meeting him on the dock and he turns around and he's two-faced again. It's just like, oh! And he gives himself up at the end, doesn't he? It's yeah. about, he's like, yeah. put me away. And it's like, oh my God, this is a comic aimed at kids. <laughs> well, that one, but that one Black and white wasn't, but yeah. in that volume, they've obviously gone, yeah, it's fine for kids. They might have edited it, maybe. They might have no, it's still it. fine. The Man Love and Other Stories is not presented as a volume for kids. Oh, no. Okay. It's, 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 it collects most of the material from Batman Adventures, but it's not presented as, a, as, a, as an all-ages book at all. Without without delving into Suicide Squad, yes, the books or the film, do you think it is a big mistake every time they go away from the clown motif with these two characters? Yes, agreed. Next question. Yeah, because I, I, I don't know how much you want it because it it's it's, it's, it's part of it's the clown are. prince of crime. It's part of who and they she's are. a harlequin. Like it, I it's... mean, even even in the, even in the Bible, which is the guide for everything we must always do, The Dark Knight Returns. Yeah, even in that. The Joker's still like apply in that they do. Frank Miller goes with the idea that the lips are something he puts on, yeah, and he applies the lipsticks. There is still the application of makeup. There is the two. I mean, obviously, we find out later that, that there's something laced in the lipstick as yeah. well. But like, with the, the we find the two. He's got like the two robots, the kid things, the yeah. carnival freaks that are sort of a callback, even though that story was after it. To kind of the carnival freaks of Killing Joke, even though Killing Joke was after yeah. that returns, it's that kind of vibe. Yeah, it's like. So there's still the carnival thing. It's still a clown. And I mean, they go in the Tunnel of Love. He dies laughing with the Richter's grin on his face. Like, there's still a clown element to that, even though he is more like sort of, he's the thin white Duke of, of death. Like, he's, well, that's what Grant Morrison made yeah. me into later on. 
But, it's, it's, but, but, but he's got the Bowie-esque outline in yeah. that book. Like he he and, um, looks like Bowie. And there's that wonderful moment, star. which again, they, they, uh, another wonderful moment from the book, which is not in the fucking adaptated, adapt, adapt, <laughs> animated adaptation. Where which is a pretty decent animated adaptation, but... It's after like yeah. Batman burns Joker's body. Yeah. And it's like his skull in the flames. Yeah. And Batman just looks at him and says, Stop laughing. Yes! And oh. it's, it's not in the, it's not no. in the animated adaptation. That no. little moment isn't in there. It's just, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> like, The Dead Night Returns is a problematic book, but it is a great book. Yeah. And it's got, and it... Read on its really, own as its own thing. It, it is really, a really it, good read. It really grabs hold of what makes the medium great and runs with it. Mm. And a lot of those moments... It's like the animated adaptations just feel flat by comparison. Yeah. Because they miss the point of a lot of what made that original mm. work so well. But slice of dice, um, slice of dice. Slice and dice, chicken leg. Oh, um, I hope we don't say balls nasty. <laughs> Damn. But um, yeah, so, so but the clown thing just it just is them. I was yeah. talking to I was talking to my friend yesterday. Actually, I was getting my hair done. Um, we were talking about like Jared Leto's joke, and I was like, she was like, it's worth seeing. I was like, not really. I was like, he just he's just he's he's a juggalo sort of rap vi- like someone double toasted the guys on double toasted made a joke about how like he looks like the sort of joker you would see like someone just do a version of the joker in a rap video yeah and then they show a screen cap of the rip ross people are beginning they go oh oh oh, oh okay oh. that's what he was made for um it really sucks but like you know they, they lose all the clown thing we were talking about the movies and we were saying like how even ledger's version is a clown yeah like he's not doing you know, da, 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 he's not got the gimmicks, but he puts on the clown makeup. And he he, he's, like he, he wears clown make. He's chosen war paint, and the war paint he's chosen is a clown. And he is shambolic, and he is clowning in his behaviour. He's got the like patch. He he's sell. got the patchwork design socks and tie, yeah. and and he's he's wearing the the bright purple suit, and, and he's sort of shuffly and unsteady on his feet. He does the magic trick with the, the pencil, like that's a clown thing to do. Magic trick, that's there. He's unpredictable. He's, his 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 gang has a clown motif, like there are the clown masks. Yeah. So he, he owns up to that. He is a clown, uh, and that's who he. And he laughs, and he does get kicks out of stuff. Like he does laugh his ass off. Like you know, he, he still is the clown. He's an urban terrorist, traumatized soldier taking revenge on a world that he suddenly realizes is a pointless place to live in. Version of the clown. Yeah. Uh, for more information on that, buy some of the Dark Knight Files books that they've released alongside it, because they basically go, yeah, he's a Gulf War survivor who yeah. is sick of the world it's like okay fair enough I'll buy that that's his one bad day his one bad day is realising I saw all my friends die what is the point yeah you give Joker an origin you just don't need to happen it because it doesn't really matter what it is yeah but it's more, it's more interesting that he sat yeah. there and come up with his own ones yeah, that's more in, that's the more interesting thing um, but like that's still the Joker he's the Joker he's a clown yeah obviously Jack Nicholson like Cesar Romero absolutely because that was the 60s show it was all about the gimmicks and the pies and the death traps and everything but yeah. like Jack Nicholson's Joker even him as creepy Uncle Joker is still hand buzzer that burns a man to death yeah like electrocutes a bloke to death I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you're dead I'm glad you're dead he's got the acid flower he's got the chattering t- he takes the time to be punched in the face and have chattering teeth in his hand ready to drop yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's yep. just like he's the clown pr- the, the party balloons the oversized gun oh, <laughs> oh, he just God. keeps pulling it out he just keeps so good just I mean even when he looks when he l- tries to look normal unquote in the art gallery scene he's still got the purple beret like he's sort of like it's this whole thing of look at me I'm arty and, 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 and I'm, a, I'm a cartoon he's the world's first fully functioning homicidal artist oh fuck I love that movie <laughs> Oh, but you know, God. why do I not watch that once a week? Like, I love that movie so much, and I love his betrayal. Like, it, it, oh. and the, and the, the least clown Joker should ever be, the absolute least clown mm. he should ever be, is a slightly exaggerated stand up comedian. Yeah. That's the absolute least clown mm. you can make him, and it still work. If you remove that and make him too. Too serious. I mean, they did it a bit with Brian Azzarello's Joker graphic novel. But well, that's an Elseworlds yeah, thing, though, isn't it's, it? It's, it's, sort of, it's sort of like, here's kind of Ledger. It but... leads to Ledger, but it kind of gets a bit too far away from the clown motif to really work. Yeah, there's not there's not um, enough clown in there. And it's just it's just nasty for the sake of being nasty. Hmm. 
it, um, it's more it's more it's more a story that like you could redo that story mm. and make it more you could make it like the animated series design and redo it that way and obviously you'd have to change the dialogue a bit to accommodate to be that joker but it it, it still would just be a story of a thug who joins the joker's gang yeah you could still tell the story his version just happens to be a bit now nah. I, mean, I quite i quite like that book but the more I find out about him, the more I'm like, isn't it weird? I sometimes find out more about the artist can taint your view of the work. Well, the, the writer, in it particular. You're right. Yeah. No, but no, but like his vision for the Joker. This is the same dude who was like, "Say that again, pussy." Yeah. Like the Killing Joke thing. It's like, oh god. Yeah. Well, the wow. changes he's made to the Killing Joke with Paul Dini, to be fair. Don't, see, and Bruce don't, Tim. They don't seem to have Bruce Tim. Don't sully Dini's name oh, in this. Yeah. Don't sully Dini's name in this travesty. They don't, they don't seem to have have, have made any <laughs> positive improvements to that particular story um so yeah i i think and it also makes him scarier yeah the The clown's are scary yeah the clown thing makes him terrifying because that's what it is he's laughing in the face batman is dark and grim and serious i'm looking i'm looking at the t-shirt you're wearing now which i'm wearing the joke i I didn't even realize yeah it's the jock cover to uh black glove black mirror black mirror that's the one yeah Yeah. it's one of the black mirror issues and it's just... It's, it's, it's a flurry, if anyone's not seen it, it's a flurry of bats that kind of form the Joker's hair and face and then there's the Joker's mouth and eyes with and bats in them. it's just a them. slash of red. But it's still a clown. That's a clown. Inside, yeah. This is a clown. It's, it's, it's a... just big bright eyes and instead of like big purple things around his eyes or big green things, he's got big black eyes. Which even Ledger's one, who's like, you know, he's black around the eyes. Mm. Eye makeup. Like clowns wear. I th- so let's in conclusion let's put it this way in conclusion Joker scary clown yes scary ass clown scary clown he's not the only scary clown no uh, if those who listen to episode one you know that Matt has got a bit of a hard on for this upcoming remake well um, to a degree you, you want it to be really good I've got cause... a bit of a hard on for Stephen King's It as a yeah. story and a no- it's one of my favourite novels it's probably my favourite novel um, really? it's that you weren't put off by the over, like page and a half long description of a can of turtle wax in the first chapter. <laughs> I, love it. I read it at age thirteen. I love it got so up to much. that page and was like, "What?" Yeah, he does that sometimes. What is this? That's like a, that's like an eight hundred plus page novel. You should yeah. read it again. The version I've got, the version I've got was um, small in size but larger in print. Yeah, it, my version was exactly one thousand six hundred and sixty three pages, Yikes. and I was always really annoyed that he didn't egg it out for at least three more. Oh, just to get one six six six. Yeah, it, the um, story the story of a group of kids in in Derry in in Maine uh, who are t- sort of uh, tormented by these horrific images as children, specifically uh, that of a clown called Pennywise who um, sort of keeps tilting them and teasing them and people die and children get eaten and go missing and they seemingly defeat it as children somehow. Then as adults someone gets killed in the same way yeah. and the one the one kid who still lives there calls them all back. You realise, oh, maybe we didn't kill it as bad as we thought we did. Yeah, there is there is something more to this being, whatever it is. The... There is there is a TV movie which again we'll t- we'll wax lyrical about it in a minute oh. I'm sure because it's fucking great. I mean it, it's not aged very well and it is far too long, but there is a lot in there to enjoy. But it's doing two. Mo- it's, it was shown yeah. in two parts. Yeah, it, it, well um, I thought it was shown in three, but then the home video version does it in two halves. Because the DVD you have to flip. Yeah, it's all they, they might have do, they might have done a DVD release since where it's all on one side but the one I've got is from like the early 2000s as far as I'm aware it's in two parts yeah and there's no indication annoyingly on the disc which side's A and which one's B so you've got to put it in and just see what your menu oh, there image is, is. There is. it's in the little ring on the inside uh, yeah I couldn't see it Damn it's it. tiny 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 it's tiny 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 but it, it's such an odd idea but but um, yeah so, so it's a TV yeah, movie DVDs. TV yeah. movie and is now uh, a two two film two film two part movie which is a smart decision I think it's the only, yeah, um, it's the only way to leave. You because they can actually make the, the the problem with the kids' story, like the story of it when they're children, is in prose. It's really frightening and uncomfortable. Mm. It's got some memorable visuals in the TV movie version, but ultimately it proves that the story of them as kids is nowhere near as interesting as you think. Because not See, nothing actually happens to anyone really. Apart from no, no, you no, I know stuff. Need to, to reread the no, I do need to reread. No, no, but I'm saying it's the TV movie version. Like, you could watch the first part and you're like, it's just a lot of flashbacks to them as kids. And mm. all that happens is they all encounter a clown who goes, hello, 
I've just scared you now. Like he doesn't try and kill blood them. everywhere. He doesn't try and kill any of them. He, what? Mm. he just no, he just torments them, and then he's like, "I'll kill you all. I'll haunt your dreams. I'll kill you all." And then he doesn't. Even when they go into its lair, he doesn't kill them. He kills one of the bullies and like traumatizes and part lobotomizes another one. Yeah, and that's it. He doesn't do anything to them. And even even in the second half of the story, like the thing that ignites the story in the first place to bring them back to to Derry, he doesn't. He's not like I'm. I've brought you back to kill you. It's like he just starts killing kids again. And when they arrive, he's like, "Oh, I recognise you lot." Yeah, but what what the <laughs> what it doesn't go into, which he does in the book, is yeah, that he's yeah. been doing it for centuries. Yeah, yeah, that's something they in the book. It's like, like a throwaway line. He's all, it's not even a throwaway line. Oh, no, no, like, in the book. Just, sorry, no, in the book. Sorry, in the, in the film, there's like yeah. a throwaway line dialogue somewhere. It's like this thing's existed for hundreds it's existed of years, for thousands of thousands. There's a moment in the book where they, they Pennywise is just a form it has taken at some point in the last century. Yeah, it, they see it coming to Earth. Hmm. In the in the book, in, a, in like a in like a vision quest yeah. thing, because um, it's an alien, effect, essentially. Uh, it's well, it's, extra it's a, dimensional. Yeah, uh, probably. Uh, I, I always took it as alien though, because I kind of like the yeah, idea. Well, that, I kind of like the idea that it's it stuck on our planet. And it's like, well, I can eat these organisms, so I guess that's what I'm going to do. It's certainly alien, and <laughs> I don't know if it's from another planet or another plane of existence. It seems to have some sort of maybe it's just on a plane. Uh, it, uh, probably at some point. There, it's it's been implied that there are other creatures like it. There's, there's a similar creature that appears in one of Stephen King's Dark Tower books. Oh um, shit! I did not know that. Yeah. Uh, and is that after that a paragraph where um, the the stranger, is that his name, what? the gun, the gun, the gun, gunslinger, gunslinger, is that the paragraph after the gunslinger is walking down the staircase and he, he suddenly goes into a three page description of a kind of turtle wax? <laughs> I, I, tend, I, tend, longer longer. I tend to tune out every time. To be fair, um, no, to be fair, the turtle wax is actually really important because the turtle motif is <laughs> pretty vital to the plot. I know, but um, still, it's just such an odd thing to spend so much time on early on. Um, um, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, kind of. Stephen King, as the nostalgia critic once said, "Your ideas are incredible, but your prose is lame." <laughs> like, which is not for everybody, and also not true. No, it's not exactly short, true. But his short fiction is. Brilliant. Yes. Now I will say that the, the Stephen King stuff I've enjoyed has been his short stories. Short That's stories stuff where I've gone. Fabulous. Oh my god, that wins me over. Yeah. I do. So I find myself with the longer books. I think the only ones I've actually read in full are It and Cujo. Oh, I and I do. I do find myself struggling a bit. I've read the majority of his oeuvre. But what, but I think that's why I'm, I'm really. Plucked. I think that's why I'm excited for the It movie because everyone keeps saying it's a remake. It's not really. It's a readaptation. It's in a re-adaptation. the same way that the thing was a readaptation of Who Goes no, There. But also, but also, the original wasn't a film. Like it was a TV yeah. TV miniseries. Everyone remembers it for, as a film because of home video release. Yeah. Um. So, but, but you know, I mean, like that's why I'm excited for it because I want to see the story told and I'm interested to see it told. Like now, mm-hmm. the image has come out of it's a it's a Skarsgård, isn't it? it was Bill a, Skarsgård. Bill Skarsgård. As Pennywise, mm-hmm. the dancing clown. It's a full body image. We say full body. It's, it's shrouded in shadow. black cloud and shadow. Which is and probably if you look, a good idea. If you look really closely as well, he's not stood. No. He's, he's floating. Yeah. It's a really nice little detail. And he's got the little pom-pom. He's got the pom pom. I, I don't think they're orange on silver, but that, yes, that's a game. According the to page. the costume designer they did an interview with on Entertainment Weekly, there are splashes of colour in the costume. You're not seeing them so much in this image, but there are splashes of yeah. orange and green in the costume. Um, but it is faded. Yeah. And I don't think this is his his look definitively. But he's, he's also shapes th- Yeah, changed. I think this is how he's good. I think, because even in the TV movie, he starts to look scarier. Like they do things with his face in certain scenes, yeah. like with the teeth and things like that. And the eyes start to change. He's kind of got the teeth in this. He's got the teeth. So, so I think they're like going to do. Teeth. I think front teeth. Oh, we'll see him looking like more rat. jovial. He yeah. Is, yeah. We'll see him looking more jovial, I think, and and happy and bouncy. And then we'll see him looking darker like this. But I like the fact that it's sort of that old school Harlequin costume. He's got the big forehead with the eruption of hair. Yeah. Like and the, the big shoulders and the big cuffs and the big uh, hips and, and pantaloons on the I, top I, of the I costume. Really, I really, really like it. His silhouette looks amazing. And, I, and, I, and I've got to say, do you remember when we looked at the preview image in episode one, way back when, we were talking about the smile that curves up with past the eyes. And yeah. I was like, oh, I'm not sure about that. Seeing the full costume, I'm like, no, okay. I, I, I like that. I like that, and I think it. I think it is the overbite. I think it's the rat teeth that sells it to me. It's like they're not doing an emphasized grin. They've attached the grin and the traditional eye makeup of a clown mm-hmm. and made it one design. 
and the grin isn't that the grins the little the, the teeth it's just and they're just they just happen to be sticking out of this red line they made it one big slash it's just oh he looks fucking delicious I like it. he looks really cool so geared up for that excited for that movie but go on I'm, I'm curious go on here's with your king we should do a king episode but here's yeah, okay, so king, let's do a king checklist before we king move on I to our, read. our final topic of the day king I have read Carrie yep. Salem's Lot mm-hmm. The Shining The Stand the, I've not read The Dead Zone uh, Firestarter Cujo The Running Man Dark Tower The Gunslinger Christine Pet Cemetery, Thinner It uh, Dark Tower 2 Drawing of the Three Misery, Tommy Knockers, Dark Half, Dark Tower Through the Wastelands, Needful Things, uh, Dolores Claiborne, uh, The Green Mile, Dark Tower 4, Wizard and Glass, Bag of Bones, Good Love Tom Gordon, Dreamcatcher, Dark Tower 5, Wolves of the Collar, Dark Tower 6, Song of Susanna, Dark Tower 7, The Dark Tower, uh, Cell, uh, Duma Key, Under the Dome, 11.22.63, I have not finished Doctor Sleep yet. But... I keep forgetting Under the Dome is one of his. Yeah. Because isn't he, he's a consultant on the TV adaptation, isn't he? On the TV show. Yeah, I've not watched the TV adaptation. Um, Under the Dome I got for Christmas the year it came out and then read it by the end of Boxing Day. It is close to a thousand pages. Christ alive. So basically everyone was like, you want some turkey? And you were like, nope, just, just drip feed it through my veins. <laughs> it and... is very long. Li- but it, it came out around the same time as the Simpsons movie which has a similar plot. Yes. He's got a lot of stick. <laughs> Although he has been, it is a concept he's been working on since the late seventies, I think. Like he just had the, he had started the manuscript and then pulled it out. Oh the my off. god. So even with such a tight deadline, Simpson did it first. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's so great. Um, um it is a quick one, just just recap something for me. Yeah. What does the creature appear to be at the end of the book? I can't remember. Because it isn't a big fucking rubbery spider, is it? it? It's got spider-esque elements. It's like, like the, I, I remember quite... describing the legs. Like yeah, it has they, like the big legs. They can't quite see it for what it actually is. So he sort of gives you enough to paint yeah. a horrific picture, but leaves it up to you to fill in the details. Yeah. Hence why everyone's that. disappointment in the TV movie but, is. It's just a big sort of spider. It looks like It looks like the maquette of the Edgar bug from Men in Black. And then they've gone, oh, we'll just stop motion animate that maquette. I really hope they kind of go more metaphysical with yeah. it and keep it more in shadow. Mm. You don't have to keep Pennywise in shadow. Mm. You see Pennywise straight away. That's the whole point of Pennywise. Yeah, he's you like, see him he's, straight away. He's out there. And Unless he's peering glory. at you through a grid. You see him in broad fucking daylight. <laughs> you see him. It's really, Hiya, Wheezy! It's the form he takes. <laughs> like, that That suit is almost a constant. Mm. But then he, he appears as the mummy. Yeah. With that fucking clown suit on. Yeah. And like, but not like. I a lot of it play because the because the, in the original novel, the kids, <laughs> the kids, the stuff with them as kids is set in fifty eight. Yeah. And then the stuff with them as adults is set in eighty two. Yeah. I think. Yeah, that's right. It's a big gap. It's that's it's true. late fifties to mid eighties anyway. I think it's twenty eight year gap. Fellas will fall in line. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a lot, a lot of a lot of it is to do is like a lot of it is to do with moving on from your childhood and growing mm. up and the things you leave behind and the things you take with you because in that gap they all forget. Yeah. Everything. And it's Apart the, from it's Mike, the phone call that makes them yeah. remember. Apart from Mike, who stays in Derry, yeah, all of them move away and forget. Mm. None of them have children. They all become very successful in their chosen fields. Yeah. But they all forget Derry. At the end of the novel, it's implied that after they defeat it. They, and start to leave mm. they all start to forget again but this time Mike starts to forget as well yeah with the implication that this time is for good yeah like they can now move um, on like it is done the deed is done but they won't remember each other yeah which is really sad but at the same time kind of cool because yeah. they're kind of assholes to each other in certain yeah. parts and of the story plays, no well not really <laughs> now that's what plays that's what plays on so on the it, isn't the girl it? called Beth Beth Bev. Bev. Does Bev sleep with everybody in the book as well? I can't remember. She doesn't sleep with everybody. I'm exaggerating. But like, there is this thing in the TV movie where it's like, uh, she kisses like half of the principal cast. In Ben has a crush on her as a, as a kid when he's really fat. Yeah. So obviously she doesn't require it. She that, has, that scene in the... Wait. She has a, John Ritter as adult... Uh, Benny? Adult Ben. Adult Ben. Yeah. Is making out with that woman who's like, I used to be a fat, so a real butterball. It's like, why, are you, why is this your... 
like make out chat. Why are you that's why are you describing that you were a fat kid whilst you're getting off with this woman in, you're trying to in the in the book. It's such an odd thing to like be flirting with. I like, used to be really fat. I was a pudgy little teenager. Oh, tell me more about your boy tits. Ugh. Which I think is actually uh, a line from the Nostalgia Cricket review. So. No, no. Um, that <laughs> I always scene, watched that thinking that's really odd. That scene goes down different in the book. Because in the book, you get a scene of them all before they go back to like remembering yeah. it and confiding in someone. Uh, well, one of them commits suicide, mm. and his wife mm. finds his body. Yeah, and um, it's the one with the stammer, isn't with, it? For for Ben, he's t- he's talking to a bartender. It's, jo- it's Georgie, isn't it? No, not Georgie. Georgie is the brother who dies in the. No, Stan. Stan commits Stan. suicide. Yeah. Um, um, ben, you see Ben talking spoiler to spoiler alert for a 30 year old book just read it it's really <laughs> good it's got a really weird squeaky bit towards the end which is would do better if we edited it out but the book as a whole is really great um, uh, yes the Matthew Watson totally great seal of approval totally great seal of approval <laughs> totally great um, it is totally great uh no, the, that scene in the book is Ben confining a bartender that he goes to every Friday, and like it's right. like this bartender's like even when he was working on the BT communication tower or the post office tower or whatever it is in the book over in England, he still was here every Friday night. And just, uh, He'd fly he's back like, just to be in that bar. Yeah, that's disturbing. And he, and he gives him the he gives him the two silver dollars, and he gives him and he like drinks like a, a flagon of whiskey. Mm. Christ, just dead straight, walks out and drives off to Derry. Um, Jeez. But it's like I forgot John Ritter was Ben in that movie. Yeah, um, he's pretty uh, good in it. It's a weird, yeah. it's a weird mix of cast. It's like Andy Dix in it. It's just well, like... as, as kids, Bev has a thing for Bill because he's yeah. like the leader of the group. Yeah, but then as adults, Bev she prefers Ben. ben yeah, together. Yeah, because because it, it, when she first sees Bill, like she just snogs his face off yeah. when they get back together, and it's like okay. I mean, he's got a wife back home, so yeah. maybe he shouldn't be enjoying this kiss. He should be more like Bev. Whoa, whoa I'm, just, I'm happy to see you too. It's, but uh, but the, 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 the relationship that they all have is is more complex. Plus, plus, I suppose it'd be that thing of the it'd be like the reverse forgetting almost. Like the, the yeah. moment they get together, it's like oh my god! Like they just start to sink into their old roles a little I, bit. In the in the book, when they come together as adults, Beverly and Bill do sleep together, hmm. but only once, and it's like. It's sort of a closure thing, I guess. Wait, hang on. I've just realised something. What? He's called Bill. Yeah. The other guy's Ben. Yeah. Where's Where's the flower pot, man? So apparently, she was the flower pot. She's a. And they were freaking planting something, isn't it? Uh, it's Bill. It's Bill. Bill that. Doing that. It's a seed joke. Bill Ben. Seaman for all. Bill Ben Bev Richie, uh, Stan Mike, and Eddie. Yeah. The losers club. Um. Because Stan's but... Stan's Stan's the one who kills himself. Stands when he kills himself. But then his head appears in the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> Just freak. Do you have Prince Albert in a can? <laughs> well, you better let him out! Well, you better <laughs> let the poor guy out! <laughs> um, <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really great book. Um, Hard to recommend. Hard to recommend. Hard to recommend. It. You will probably find it, and this isn't a slight to the book, you will probably find it in your local charity shop. Guaranteed that is one of the, that is yeah, one of the books that everyone will one. have owned at some point. And every charity shop will probably have at least one coffee. If not, Go grab it for a few couple quid. Give pretty it a much st- King's entire back catalogue is pretty much constantly in print. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it never stops. So you can nip up to And they keep, they keep redesigning back. the spines as well, which yeah. is annoying as fuck. Because it's like, God damn it, they don't no, match the anymore. The collection of King's is impossible. <laughs> unless, you, think... unless you buy them all at the time of the release. Just... You suddenly go, here's all of them. Spend 300 quid yeah. and get them all. And then... I speak as someone who's had a complete collection, a, a, a nearly complete collection of, <laughs> of Kings back before the, his accident. So before he started pumping stuff out twice a year. Um, but now I don't have any in print, I don't think, apart from the Dark Tower. The new reprints of the Dark Tower that he did when he did the last three books. I've got the, th- I've got the, last, I've got the last three in hardback in first editions. And I've got the reissue paperbacks of the first four. But I haven't got the ones to keep hold of. No. Um, but those are the only uh, Stephen King I still have in print. Everything else I've got is on Kindle now. So I've got it. Well, not everything else. The stuff I've got. I've got it. Skeleton Crew and Night Shift, which are short story collections. Uh, Doctor Sleep and something else. On Kindle. Um, so you can pick up on Kindle. You can get it paperback. It's always in print. You can try looking in the charity shop for it. Give it a read. It's really good. Um, 
Yeah. It's... One, one day we should sit down and watch the Tommy Knockers miniseries. Oh, it's terrible. It's so bad. The Tommy Knockers itself is... Scaring the little girl! It's just awful. Tommy, it's the... dreadful. Stephen King has, has quite openly admitted that he actually can't remember writing the Tommy Knockers. <laughs> because he just Tommy knocked it out he over was, a he weekend. Was in, he was in the middle of cocaine and alcohol addiction when he wrote that. Oh, smashing! He, which is why... It, which is what it's a metaphor for. Yeah. It's what it's an allegory for. What are you for. talking about? It's absolutely terrifying. It ends and with flying balls of teeth. And it's just... <laughs> no, that's the Langoliers. Was that Langoliers? I know, off Langoliers. Oh, shit. They're, um, so I was quoting Langoliers. Well, we need to watch Langoliers Bron- then. Bron- Bronson Pinchot gets Which one was Tommy Knockers then? Tommy Knockers is... I've just associated the made-up word with the, with the creatures, that's why. Tommy Knockers is Jimmy Smith's. Jimmy Smith. And um, it's a woman... A spaceship in her backyard. That right, yes, and gotcha, 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 gotcha. That is also that is also pretty damn terrible. Langoliers is a terrible. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. It's really bad. Yeah, um, oh, but God. it's um, <laughs> it's a, it's a not a great novel, but it's worth reading. Just like this is this is what Stephen King managed to pump out when he could, he was in he was delirious. He and was still incoherent. His grammar was still flawless, and it's still <laughs> actually. a Oh, he had a very, oh, had a very patient read. editor. It's not a very good novel, but it's it's an all right read. Like it's not. It's it, I'd still take it over a lot of other shit out there. It well, it worth checking out. Go read it. Yeah, it's really great. Um, Watch the Tim Curry TV, TV movie. movie. It's dated, but it's got some really good moments in it. And Tim Curry's great. And you'll spend a lot of it going, "Oh my god, is that? And is that? Yeah. And is that? Especially when you see young Seth Green." One thing um, about the movie, though, is they have updated the... You know, Seth Green, the tallest cast yeah. member of that group. They have Seth a... Green, they have... the tallest cast member of that group. They have updated that movie. The, the new version is updated, so the kid stuff takes place in the 80s. Mm. And the yeah. adult stuff takes place in the present day. So it kind of plugs into that 80s nostalgia where Stephen King was huge. Mm. And Stephen King adaptations were huge. It's a clever, it's a clever decision, that, I think. Because uh, it, it ties in more into the, the King legacy and the legacy of the book and, and its fan base. It's also what Stranger Things <laughs> digs into so well. Oh, fine. Go watch and it watch this week. Stranger Things. I'm watching Young Justice right now. Christopher. Okay, fine. Moving on very briefly to our last bit of cloud chat. Before we uh, have a look at a few questions and emails. So, way back when, <laughs> this fake trailer was doing the rounds, Eli Roth helped mate, called Clown. For this movie about a guy who's into a clown monster. Was it, it was a fake trailer. It was a fake trailer for us. Was it part of Grindhouse or something? I think it was. Oh, no, no, because his one in Grindhouse was um, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, with the Pope. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Light meat. Dark meat. <laughs> All will be carved. <laughs> Thank you. It's so good. <laughs> So good. Um, no, I, I don't know. I'm not sure whether it was your fake trailer, but I assume it was part of one of those grindhouse things. And then, then eventually, around around 2015, it was start of last year or end of the year before, mm-hmm. I saw a trailer for Clown, an actual trailer for Clown. Um, and I was like, that looks interesting. So apparently, it got released in 2014. Um. But it kind of flew under everyone's radar. And it popped up to Amazon Prime last year. I was like, eh, I'm going to have to check that out. It's, I mean, this is a movie that's flown so far under the radar that it doesn't have a consensus on Rotten Tomatoes. Mm. I was going to say, because when, um, I, when, I, when I opened it up on your recommendation just today, it didn't even have a star rating yeah. which it oh. gets from um, IMDB yeah. so it's not enough ratings on there even like you go to an IMDB there's like there's a couple of user reviews but there's no real trivia there's like one line in the quotes there's nothing in goose like and, people and fill yeah. that stuff up all the time and yeah I um, have seen this movie on sale in, in our local Asda yeah. I've seen it on DVD in the little like section of like straight to DVD horrors that they've got always going on it came out over here on March 2nd 2015 after getting a UK premiere in at Fright Fest Glasgow. Okay. And, but it, it, it didn't get distribution rights from Dimension and Film Nation until 2012. It was filmed in late 2012. Um, after the... Um, I'm trying to find when the fake trailer was, was done. The original fake trailer was done. Um, but so, I can't... So it was 2010 before? It. 2010 is the original short movie, yeah. Okay, which, which um, span out of the fake trailer. 
I'm not sure. <laughs> so many levels. Anyway, it's so not many important. layers. It's not important. Oh no, yeah, no. John Watts, who directed it, and the reason why we're watching this part for the clown theme is also that John Watts is directing Spider-Man: Homecoming. Yeah. So if you um, are 18 and above and have an Amazon Prime account, go watch this because not only is it a weird fr- film about a, cl- a killer clown premise, but also you'll get a taste of what Spider-Man: Homecoming might be like, based on like how he handles material and how he, you know, sort of. Oh. No, the composition and everything. The way they got it made was John Watts and Christopher D. Ford, who wrote it, yeah. they uploaded a fake trailer to YouTube that announced Eli Roth was producing it. Didn't know anything about it. Brilliant. So Eli Roth saw it and was like, I like the balls on them. Yeah. <laughs> and came on to produce the movie. So he went to touch them and he went, hey, I am producing shit, yet, let's talk. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, brilliant. Okay. That's really cool. Um, so, but yeah, it's <laughs> it's a, and um, so yeah, so we're curious to see what John Watts can do. He's also got another theatrical movie. He's only really this and um, Cop Car, which is with Kevin Bacon, yeah, which is about a police officer who has to find his car that's been stolen, driven by two youths. Yeah, which yes. I haven't seen anywhere. I haven't, I haven't found that around yet, but I'm gonna try and check that out. So but, during that late 2000s, early 2010 period where Kevin Baker basically did everything. It was 2014. Oh, yeah. So, so, so it's the clown. It's the tail end of yeah. all that. <laughs> so it's after clown before he got the Spider-Man job, I imagine. Um, how the hell he got the Spider-Man job at the back of clown, I'll never know. But I don't know, maybe he knows someone there not, and he, maybe he pitched his sort of idea and they were like... Well, I think it's also, it's also because I think big studios like Marvel seem to be getting unknown directors or like quite young directors. Yeah. Like, they don't have a lot of big genre tempo stuff under their belt because they can slot into their house style more easily. Yeah. It, it means you're not fighting too much for vision. You're not, you've not got a Edgar Wright, yeah. Joss Whedon kind of thing where it's like having to force compromise and eventually it just is like, no, it's better for us to stick to our thing. Like, mm. Which, you know, for better for worse, but so far for better. So, Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I'll, I lament that I'll never see Edgar Wright's Ant-Man, but I very much enjoy Peyton Reed, so yeah. So it's uh, it works well. Yeah. And it fits into that world, and and it's I'm a lot right of fun. And, um, but Clown is the story of a bloke who Kent McCoy, Kent McCoy, Kent McCoy, who uh, is he? He's like a real estate agent, a and they're they're looking at clearing out this old house, and he finds a clown costume which he wears to his son's birthday party because the clown, clown cancels, and um, then he can't get it off. And it becomes disturbingly apparent over the course of the day that his hair is like it's not a wig anymore. His hair is now multicolored and permed, and the nose really isn't coming off. That was a moment that actually made me yeah. like grip the ironing board. At that really... point. I was ironing while I was watching it. And I just gripped the ironing board at that point. There's some really like... his wife, who's a dentist, tries to pull the nose off. I don't think she's a dentist. I'm, I'm sure there's a mention of it somewhere. Um, mm. I think I'm thinking she's a dentist just because out of all the tools she had, she had like sort of a lot of teeth stuff, like little mirrors and everything. I suppose I might be wrong, but I because that, th- that those 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 pliers are not as someone who's had teeth out. <laughs> those pliers are not what you take teeth out with. No, you take clown noses off with them. No, you take teeth out with basically this little thing that's like a shoehorn. Oh no, no, I'm just saying those those. Oh are, yeah, those yeah, are clown, clown nose tweezers. <laughs> but, yeah. like, but so he starts to change, and his wife tries to help him get out the costume, and he tries to cut himself out the costume, and he cuts his wrist and everything. It's like. Is this? And then eventually he starts to develop a, a, a insatiable hunger for mostly the head and shoulders of children. Yeah, or just children because he never in eats the children fully. He died. He's always well, spitting out. He's listen, always spitting out jaw bones. Have you ever tried to eat a child in one sitting? Oh God, no. Like, there's you, a you lot of a, meat there. You need a fine wine. Um, <laughs> fine wine, a lot of toast. But um, <laughs> no. But he, every time he spat some out, he always spat out a jaw. Or a jawbone, or yeah, like a yeah. teeth. So, and and considering the, because here's the thing. Again, I will stress this: if you are not 18 or above, don't watch it. That's our disclaimer. But also, if you've got a strong stomach for not necessarily There's scenes, some... not necessarily scenes of gore. Oh, I don't but, know. But the sight of gore. Yeah, There's some you don't really, you don't really see either. gore happen. You see the aftermath of. So gore. Before we go any further, as well, I just want to say mm. we're going to get into some spoilers on this movie, so it's not yeah. like. And it's not like an, I would I would recommend it if you like horror movies. Yeah, if you, if you like um, if you like horror movies and the idea of evil clowns appeals to you, give it a go. And it does it does have some surprises like 
I mean, it does have some balls on it. So <laughs> if you want to be surprised by it, stop listening now. Go watch it. It's on Amazon Prime, at least in the UK. Yeah. Um, give it a watch and then come back and listen to us as we as we delve into it. Because so yeah, from this point on, spoilers for clown. Yeah. They are not frightened to follow up on the premise of this thing kills children. Oh boy, are they not? They are not any frightened other, any at other, all. Any other film would be like, oh, it eats children, and you'd see creative and wacky. You'd see like killer clowns from outer space style stuff, yeah. where it's like cocoons of cotton candy or the, the shadow puppet of of a tyrannosaur eating a crowd of people. Just, just again, side note: killer clowns from outer space is dreadful and incredible at the same time. Killer Clowns from Outer Space is pretty great. It's terrible. It's pretty great. But in a good way. But it's 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 very much in the vein of those like mid to late eighties sort of twanging cheap creature features. Movie, yeah. Things like uh when when the eighties harks back to the B movies of the fifties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like the creature feature movies um yeah like I say Gremlins and Critters are the things that come most to mind. Yeah. Though no, Gremlins is more of a comedy. Yeah, Gremlins is a dark comedy from yeah. the off. Yeah. But yeah, that kind of, that era yeah. of things come along and they're kind of goofy looking and, and but they're going to kill you and they kill you in funny ways and things like that. Yeah. Whereas, not so much ho- outright. I mean, Killer Clown from Outer Space is an outright horror comedy. Mm. Whereas mm. some of those movies have their tongue more, more tongue in cheek than out. Um, Whereas but, Clown is yeah. like, it's horror. It's a horror movie. But there are moments in it which are just so ridiculous that you're like, no, they have to be... This has to be a gag. He goes to devour the bully of his child. Oh, yeah. I love that, that's, what, that's why I think his personality hasn't completely left at that point, because why else would he go after that kid? Well, he's just desperate for children. Yeah, but why would, he, why would he traverse all the way to get that address? And yeah, and have his kid freak and not just eat his son. Yeah, I suppose. I, I, think, um, I think there's enough of him left at that point to be like... Well, this is fine. I'm I'm gonna kill the kid who's yeah. bullying my child. But but by the time they, by the time they get the phone house, he's completely gone. Yeah. This creature is now like living because basically this dude turns into a clown. There, uh, but the clown, which apparently was a demon that lived in the hills, the demon that, that summoned children, that like lured children to the hills and devoured them alive, devoured them whole. And based on what he seems to leave behind in this movie, mostly just the heads. Like he seems to just eat their heads. Because the bully, what's left of him is like his lower torso and arms yeah, and his legs. No, I don't think his arms are there. No, there's, there's arms. There's, there's arms. arms. Yeah, there's arms. Because like with the kid in the jungle gym, he spits the arms oh, out down the thing. Them. Oh, he maybe just wants the sweet meats. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Maybe he just wants the, with the, the sweet, sweet innards. Red meat. Was it a dark meat? White meat? Oh, we carved. <laughs> oh, I love that nice creature. Um, but it's this thing of the costume starts to slowly become part of him and it, it sort of has this old kind of leathery look that then starts to look more like flesh and his hands yeah. and feet grow because like, that's, what, that's and... what it is it's they they, they skin mm. the demon yeah and uh, and the demon's skin will now inhabit people who put it on yeah. and use them as a vessel to continue its devouring which we find out it, it's done previously to peter stomer yeah who well, is I... wonderful in how this. did he get out of it um his brother yeah. Who ran the ward. Yeah. Which is the reason he put on the costume in the first place, because he yeah. wanted to go on and save the children. Yeah. Smuggled out five children yeah. from the ward and fed them to him. Yeah. And then the demon released him. It appeased him. Yeah. It appeased the it demon. appeased the demon. Because that's Pete... what happens in the movie. That's where he says, yeah. like, bring me one child and you can have your husband back. Which is why Peter Stamere's like, I wish he'd killed me. Mm. I hate myself for it. And then he... He has to live brother. with the guilt of it forever. Yeah. But at the same time, it means they now are both, like... Guard this costume. But he, guard like, he's, like he said, he didn't. His brother didn't leave the house. He guarded the costume there. He didn't know his brother had died until Kent called him. So they've not obviously not been. Spe- so I guess that drove a wedge between them. They mm. were like, I can't, I can't live with this. Yeah. And you, and they tried to destroy the costume. We couldn't destroy it, so you can't destroy the costume. Um. So it's got you know it's got elements of that sort of gimmicky franchise movie that that you had in that late 80s that span out into 90 straight to video sequels like how many leprechaun movies did we get mm. like Candyman almost got there but it was just a little bit too late yeah. but then by the time the horror crash of the mid 90s came along it kind of stopped Candyman from becoming a long franchise Hellraiser got it um, that kind of thing yeah um, like this could this could have been that it could have been the thing where it was just every 
another movie, more movie after movie of someone putting on the suit and becoming yeah. this clown monster. And Pumpkin oh, now he's head. got a, now he's got a clown wife and, yeah. and all this stuff. Let me just say Child's this though: play. they play, do it? a clown dog. Oh, the clown dog's amazing. Because the dog eats the rubber nose because it's obviously fleshy enough that it goes, all right, and it just eats it. Well, it's got it. a bit of Kent's nose in it. Just fucking gross. <laughs> and then, like, the dog starts to get sick and they put, like, the baby gates up on on, on a room in the yeah. house to keep it in there because it's sort of being a bit, like, sort of stuttery and barking and everything and whimpering. And, and it's also this. got a massive red nose its face is turning. Oh, no, 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 but that's, <laughs> well, no, but that, that's, more, that's more blatant when they come back to the house, like, and it attacks oh, yeah. her because it's just, like, it's a clown now. The it's dog a clown. is a clown. It's a clown dog. It is infected by the flesh of the demon. Yeah. It's a freaking clown dog. And then Peter Stamere lops his head lops off and you see his, head his headless body stumbling. Oh, so if you don't, if you like dogs, maybe don't want this, watch this movie because the dog gets decapitated. If you like kids, maybe don't watch this movie because I love kids. kids. <laughs> but, um, the balls on them for doing it though. For oh going, yeah, we're gonna like... sh- we don't, They don't ever show a child being killed. In close up, no. The closest you get but, is but when... they show the aftermath, and I think that's yeah. that's why that's where they've had the balls to sort of go. Well, no one know, else will do this because that that jungle gym sequence is pretty insane. Oh no, but you don't see the the tearing. No, but you do you see, see you see the body flung. You see a bunch of blood. There it is. You see the headless an body. It keeps the head. And you see a couple of internal organs. Mm. They looked around awful with their blood. It's like do. when you get that great blood splatter on the TV after the after he kills the bullet. Yeah, it's like everyone's who's been playing Halo with a bunch of jackasses, so they got that stereotype right down. It's like you get a spray of blood and then an organ, like an unidentifiable or just lump of flesh, lump of flesh, lump of a fall. And then it happens again in the jungle gym where the the the, the um... with that ominous girl going, "There's someone up there, don't go." Yeah, and then she just walks away, and you're like. Sorry, is there a supernatural okay. girl in this movie now, or did she just deliver that like, line a little uh, too uh, ominously? And also, like, but you see this like tr- this like gush of blood come down the slide mm. into the ball pit and then another couple of lumps of unidentified mm. organ and then an arm yeah and it's just oh god <laughs> um but even then he sort of says like he, he, he's gonna appease he's like just bring me one more child maybe he has to does he have to have five is that a rule because by that point he's had a yeah, few yeah uh, uh, when Peter Stamare is uh is, yeah, is doing he, exposition because Peter Stamare is yeah, the guy you go he has, to for your horror movie because he has I've just realised he eats four kids up to that point. He has the kid in the motel. He's the first one he devours. Yeah. Then he has the bully. Yeah. Then he has the kid in the ball pit. You don't see that, but at the end of that establishing shot, you, know you, see, him, you see him pit, disappear yeah. in the ball pit. And then another kid walks through and it's like, someone's peed in here! Because he's got, like, moisture on his legs. Yeah. So that's three kids. Then and then the one in the jungle gym. Yeah. So, yes, it must be a five-kid rule. So you, yeah, it's, th- this would have been... A horror franchise thing because it would be like he has to devour five children just before like he it. goes away. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I think it's a, Hi, it's a, it's a different number of children in it before he. It's like he has. To, he's not necessarily children. But I think it's more like he has to be full, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, he's learned. He's learned to prey on children as, mm. as, as he's gotten older. As he's been in Derry longer. It's just easier. <laughs> um, and um, but yeah, so it's, <sighs> it's like and that was cool. There's a bit where the wife, because halfway through the movie, our protagonist for the first part is Kent. Yeah. Like, we're following yeah, him, yeah. and we were like, oh my god. And then he starts to become more demon and less Kent, and that's when the movie switches protagonist to his wife. A demon. <laughs> switches, or it's Stamere. Switches I protagonist to his wife. Stamere, and he says to her, like, he says, like, he's, he, he could kill Stamere's character and her, but he won't. He says, like, bring me one more child, bring me a child to our favourite spot. Babe. Babe. And then he goes... So she starts to think about it, like all these kids are being like they're finding their mums and dads outside the, the 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 like the jungle gym, and she nearly does it, and then she stops herself, and there's this whole thing of she's like, what the hell am I doing? I can't do this. Then she gets in the car, and a girl, yeah, that's why she's a dentist, yeah, because yeah. the a girl knocks on, she's oh, like, yeah, she's my my, I was with a party, like my mum and dad aren't here, um, like I recognise you, like you were the nice dent, you were the lady at the dentist, you were really nice, like could you take me home? She's like. Sure, and you just see her go. Oh God, I've got to. This is my only chance. It's like, oh my God, they're gonna go there. Our main character is going to sacrifice a child to the creature. What the hell? And then, obviously, the last second, she changes her mind. She realizes how ridiculous it is. Can we talk about the fact that they use what looks like sort of buttercream as blood? 
Yeah. It's like a mix of rainbow icing and Which is that is that great moment where he tries to kill He tries to kill himself. Which they could have ended the film there. Yeah. But what He no, shoots himself in the bathroom at the motel, he says, gun in the mouth. As Peter the Man says, you have to decapitate it. Yeah. So he shoots himself in the head. Which implies that he knew all along the yeah. only way we were gonna kill him, the only way we were gonna stop it is if we fed him five children, which I'm never gonna allow to happen because yeah. I because I did it. Or kill him. But he never outright says it to her, to the wife. He, ne- he says, like, uh, I'll help he, you. He I'll does. set him free. And he eventually does. But at first he's like, I'm the only one who can help you. I'm the only one who can help him. Yeah. And what he actually means is, I'm, I'm going to bludgeon his head in with a hammer and kill him. Because well, no, that's what he goes to do in the jungle gym. He's got a hammer. That's what he's got in the jungle gym. Yeah. So he's going to basically bash his head in completely and, like, destroy the head, pulp the head. Which is kind of how he dies eventually anyway. Yeah. Well, well, well there's, there's the chain around the... cut off, but then it kind yeah. of melts. And that's the most disturbing thing, when the clown head melts away, and, and Kent it's Kent's underneath head it. underneath, and he's like, oh, God! It's like, nothing could have been done, but no. it wasn't lying. Kent was inside this thing. Yeah. And it was going to let him go once it had eaten five children. Oh, my God, this movie. The more I'm talking about it, the more I'm like, yeah, I actually quite liked it. Yeah, I... Because I'd seen it... This is the second time I've watched it. It's disturbing. And I actually really enjoyed... I enjoyed it a lot more the second time through. Especially because it just, like, little bits of... Like, how like how happy the kid is at the birthday party at the beginning. And being like, this is the best birthday ever. You know you can say that at the end of the week, sport. <laughs> and so I go to... And this, this, this one was like... The, like, his wife's dad ha- has no reason to dislike him that we see. But just hates Kent. Yeah. Like... He- from the off. There's this implication that he thinks that he's possibly abusing her or threatening her. And, and he's like, he's like, just tell me if there's something wrong. Just tell me. And then the second half of the film, he sort of kind of believes um, that Kent, something's happened to Kent and he's turned into something. And then gets but, but then he still goes back to the house to confront yeah. him. It's like, what? that was a good shot. That was like them going, all right, FX team. Let's see, what happens. Let's, see what, pretty great. let's see what happens when an adult has their jaw ripped And off. I think there's actually, there's an awful lot of that going around in movies at the moment. But uh, there's a, <laughs> there's an awful lot of jaw ripping. Oh, I don't know what I see. It well, even in this, every time he spat up parts of the, he always spat up the bones of the child. It, yeah. it was always a jaw. They love jaw, they love jaws, don't they? they? Love a good jaw. Just, just, just John Watts, he loves a good jaw. He loves a good jaw, um, baby. Um, so we'll, get, yeah. we'll get Tombstone in the Spider-Man think, movie oh, with, his, with his sharpened teeth. I, um, <laughs> the, there were a lot of practical effects in this movie, I feel. There were. There wasn't much CGI. And what CGI there was, like on the clown face towards the end, was really well hidden in shadow. Yeah. The only time like, I could the only time I was like that CGI was the videotape of the clown yeah. before. Because the way it moves, it's so obviously not a person performing the movements. Mm. I was like, that's a CGI clown. But I feel like a lot of the wide But then by the time you see that version of the creature by the end yeah. of the movie it's like 95% practical and yeah. it works really well. So you retroactively forget the CG clown because you're like, oh, there it is in motion. I mean, it, you don't see very much of that videotape anyway. No, it sort of so, looks like he's gone a bit further. Yeah. Um, well, he's got the, the full-on horn slash clown hat. Yes. By that point. Which I, starts I think, I think it is a... I think it's a dumb premise, the idea of like, no, clown. the clown was always an evil thing. We just... We tricked ourselves into thinking it was nice. Because obviously the sad tragedy of the art of clowning, the traditional art of clowning, is that it was never meant to be terrifying. It was always meant to be jovial and escapism and funny. And at some point, either people have... Because it's like, oh, there's there's chlorophobia, the fear of clowns. It's like, yeah, but people can be frightened of buttons. People can be frightened of pebbles. People can be frightened of stepping on cracks in the pavement. Clowns are creepy, though. No, I think we've been conditioned into that. The same way we have with ventriloquist dummies. Yeah, I think I think we've been made to think they're scary because sometime, once upon a time, probably in the early days of cinema, probably went, in the eighties, someone went like the Joker. Wouldn't it be frightening if a clown meant you harm? Because clowns are figures of fun. Yeah. Suddenly, that clown kills you. That's a terrifying idea. I think that's that's. I mean, it didn't happen. My enjoyment of the movie, obviously, but there is a reason why there are clown like sort of companies and sects in America and people clown and, rights groups genuinely <laughs> they genuinely are who who always like go against these movies and things like that because they're like you are completely destroying something that was pure like it's all right to do it occasionally but when everything that features a clown now is about an evil clown you're screwing up guys like stop doing it because you'll still see traditional clowns in travelling circuses that come to towns. Like, there, there are traditional clowns, and sometimes you'll get the circuses, like the Circus of Horrors and all that, that play on 
evil clowns and stuff and they make it so that their clowns are scary clowns but they're still the comedy part of the evening they still do the funny magic tricks and stuff like that they do the sorry people in Alpha. they obviously make more of a ha-ha thing of it and la 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 so I suppose the question to finish out the clown chat on is <laughs> has the creepy clown ruined the clown or do you think we will get someone come along at some point and do something with a clown and make us go, ah, that was funny. There's been attempts. There's been like, I can't, I can't yeah, think of examples um, off the top of my head, but there's been stories where people have done like, the clown sort of as an arsehole, like, oh yeah, blah, 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 like the bad Santa kind of approach to clowning. I and it, it sort of wins you over again. But, I'd see, like, I'd like to see someone attempt it. I'd like, to, I'd like to see like a variety act or something attempt to do the clown again. All, all joking aside, I've always been able to separate the creepy clown from the funny clown. Have you? Yeah, like... But has your DNA always been able to separate it? Yeah, yeah I don't know. Like, I've never really had... I, 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 didn't, I didn't have a problem with spiders until I saw a close-up of their face on a documentary as a kid. And that freaked me out. I suddenly was like, that's what they look like? My God, they are incredibly... Ill- and that put me off. If I had never seen that, I'd probably be fine with them. The same way that... Have we not been shown clown stories? We probably would be okay with them. See, it's never really been an issue for me. I can't really say always... that when there's a joker. There's a joker on in the living room that is a pretty terrifying <laughs> clown face. I've always, I'm not <laughs> I, a funny clown has always been a funny clown to me, and a scary clown has always been a scary clown. Like I've never really found a clown creepy unless it's been meant to be creepy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's it's creepy not clown there. creepy clown there. I think maybe it's not something that's ever affected me. Um, well, it's affected some of our listeners over on Twitter. Oh, two okay. people listed Odd Bob from the Sarah Jane Adventures as the clown that made them hate clowns. There, there is a, a Sarah Jane Adventures series two story. I think it's the the first second story of series two. The first one's the last on Tara. Is about clowns and Bradley Walsh plays odd bob who again no 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 sounds ridiculous oh, right god it sounds ridiculous creepy proper creepy yeah and the idea is it's this entity that sarah jane saw in a bit of a callback to it as a child and it freaked her out like it's something like that. oh she saw clowns and that image has always been there but there are evil clowns in it and it's like okay and it's an alien that looks like a clown so sarah jane adventures not helping the cause. Um, Absolutely not. That was Ryan Joins and Small Ed. Um, Ian McLean says the clown that freaked him out. Uh, he listed quite a few, but the one that I thought was quite significant was the clown with the tearaway face from Nightmare Before Christmas. I think as yes. a kid, that one would freak you out. Here in a flash, they're gone without a trace. He's like, Ooh, okay. There's... In fact, I think that was the image. Cause yeah. Newsflash, I'm wearing a Jack Skellington earring. I freaking love that movie. He does love that movie. Didn't watch it in full until I was 11. Four-year-old me watched it, got to the clown, and went, no. It's real creepy. And it wasn't because it was a clown. It was the visuals, it was the style, the animation. I wasn't used to it. It's a real creepy movie. Out. It is. And especially to four-year-old... I mean, <laughs> Lucy, by comparison, four-year-old her watched it and thought it was the most amazing thing ever and nearly wore out the videotape. Um, so there's a lot, really. Mm. But I was like, wow, like that is a... Scary ass clown. You always forget about him. Yeah. Uh, special shout outs to the killer clowns and the violator from Spawn. Uh, yes, who he, John Lugues me on a patsy. Yeah, just walking around and. <laughs> I'm the penguin, but also the Joker. I've got the uh, original <laughs> Spawn action figure of Clown. And he is literally. His gimmick, because all those original series of Spawn action figures had a gimmick. He's, gonna be, he's basically he, he's got movable arms but that's it that's the only thing about him is posable the rest of him is a big solid sculpt yeah but you turn one of his arms all the way around and his head flips in his chest over to a violator head oh it's creepy and kind it's of brilliant really creepy I'll have to, we'll have to do a little feature on those on those spawn things I, I, I'd, 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 one of him, I'd want him in a straight jacket with a gurney brilliant yeah. that's quite good yeah. I've got that original series I've got the it's his spawn medieval spawn clown violator Tremor and Overt Kill. <laughs> because that's a name. The 90s, ladies and, and gentlemen. Oh man, you wait till you see those figures. 90s as fuck. 
Um, <laughs> speaking of fuck, speaking we've of, had a, we've had an email. Speaking uh, of fuck, um, we've had an email. Hello, Dan Rawlings. Hello, Dan again. Rawlings, you lovely man. Um, uh, an email. Always nice to hear from you. Yeah, if you want to get in touch um, with us, by the way, you can always tweet us at official CDJ and at the Matty Watt. But we encourage that if you want to say bigger words, email us bigdamncontact at gmail dot com. So, Which is what Dan Rawlings has done. He said hello, and he's got some questions for us now. Thank you for having sex with um, my ears. Is how he opens. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to table two of your questions. Yes. For a later date. Yes. Namely questions two and five. Yes. Although I will say now, absolutely nothing. Let it die. And no. <laughs> um, you know what the questions are. <laughs> you know what the questions uh, are. But we'll cover those topics in greater depth at a later date. So yeah. we're gonna we're gonna come to that. Don't worry. First one, are we thinking of having different guests on the podcast? Yes, is the plan. We wanted to get it up and running, and there will be times where, like, one of us isn't available and the other one is, so if we, you know, we want to do current news, we'll get someone to stand in. Yeah. We are chatting with anyone who listened to 9 is 10, we are bothering Mr. Guy Lambert, who wants to do at least an episode with us, and I keep trying to figure out a date we can But we're always it. bothering Guy. We're always bothering Guy. Um, <laughs> but, like, that'd be, that'd be a fun one. It'd be nice to reunite the uh, 10 is 10 uh, trifecta for an episode. Um, and I think our intention is as well, like, uh, over time, we'll try and, if we can, if there's local conventions, if there's, like, a guest we can get to sit down and chat with, we'll try and do something like that. Yeah. If, like, a comic book guest or something, that'd be quite fun. Uh, like I want, I want to, I want to get Kevin Scott to do one with us and see if Rachel starts up for doing one. The artist for Star Trek: Planet of the Apes and, and Twelfth Doctor comic. Let's see if she's up for doing one. Mm-hmm. Um, but all in good time, good sirs. All in good time. All in good time. Um, uh, what do we want to see in Marvel's Phase Four and linked? Do we think Infinity War will be overcrowded? Well, I think well, I think we'll go into Phase Four in a bigger depth down the line. But, I do, know we th- like but to see. do we think Infinity War? Oh, let's talk about let's talk about that next time because we could do a whole thing on that. We could pitch yes. it. We'll, we'll talk um, about that next episode. Don't worry. But do you think Infinity War will be overcrowded? Uh, things just shoehorned in. I think a, a big fear about this has happened because Downey Junior. Robert Downey Junior. posted on his Facebook page this past week like cast. a cast list image for Infinity War. It's fan made. He doesn't say that, but it says that the films are called Infinity War Part One with the original release date, yeah. Infinity War Part Two with the original release date. Those are no longer the titles of the movies. And also the fonts are different for the yeah. different names. But this poster basically was like Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, Scarlett Johansson, Jeremy Renner, you know, Sam Jackson, Mark Ruffalo, uh, you know, freaking, um, um, Paul Rudd. And it's like mentioning everybody from the movies. And then it says like Charlie Cox, Kristen Ritter, Luke Col- well, uh, that's Coulter. Not gonna happen. That's not going to happen. It would be amazing if we got a flash of some kind to show but that extended They're world. not going to be... Yeah, and I think we might have that, but it's like, and, and people have been asking. People, people keep saying, "Dead easy." It's dead easy. But after Deadpool people... series three goes about, have one shot of no, something no, but... in a Spider-Man movie involving Fisk or mention people... Fisk in Homecoming. People do keep saying it's dead easy. It's dead easy. Oh no! no it's, uh, it's at which not, point? It's not at easy. At which point, Marvel to... TV executives keep saying, "No." No, it's not. It's really not easy. You don't like, understand. Think about the, the schedules. Film, the, the film guys have allowed us to be an incredibly amazing like place to do our thing, but they also are not interested in talking with us because it's more complicated than you can imagine. No, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not that they're not interested in talking to them. Oh, they no, are talking to I them. I think it's more a case of they're going like, like uh, I don't want to begin this discussion because we would have to start miles of paperwork. Yeah. No, I don't think it's that. But at the same not, time, that's not but, what but, when you, but when you've got Charlie Cox going, things. when you've got Charlie Cox going, like fuck, I'll just drop into one of them as Matt Murdock. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah, but then getting Charlie Cox free, making sure that it's not clashing with Daredevil, <laughs> making sure that that then works with what is happening in Daredevil, and then what is happening in Avengers, and then maybe do we want to put Agents of Shield in there? But what are they filming? Oh, actually, they filmed like three months ago. Oh, oh dear. That's what. Yeah. That's the tricky bit. Is like you've got three different companies making a bunch of stuff in different places on different schedules. It is insane. The logistics of a film alone, mm. just one film, a small film, not even a big tentpole blockbuster like Infinity War is going to be. Am oh I boggling? God. Oh my god! You know you could do it. You know, you could do it. It's literally a throwaway moment, which you could then tie into their individual Netflix series and tell that story. Yeah. But you just have, you have like, before the Avengers go off, I'm just presuming what the story is, but before the Avengers go off world, like, don't take Spider-Man with them. Doesn't belong in the cosmic universe as teenage Spider-Man. Keep him at thingy level. Mm. But have him be the one to sort of like, tell basically, have start basically like, spread the word, like, the place needs to be, like, maybe something's happened in New York that has been the catalyst for them to go up. So it's like, 
keep them safe and it's just like spread the word and just have one scene of spidey arriving at a location and going like uh so like with with like the document or whatever to describe it all whatever so, like so uh uh thanks for coming here today everyone um uh, let's call this meeting to order and you just cut to a wide shot of like the warehouse they're meeting or whatever and you could you can get everyone at different times to literally th like they did with the final shot of age of ultron none of those guys were in the same shot mm -hmm. together like they were all shot separately you just get your defenders in that moment defenders and like doctor strange or whatever like that's how you punish her that's how you get them there and it's just this throwaway thing of like don't worry they've got new york they'll take care of it you get up there and then if you want, in whatever series they're up to at that point, or that make that your second Defenders series, they, it's them dealing with the ground level incident. Yeah, but look how long it's taken them to plan Defenders. If this I isn't know. already planned... I know. If but this, this isn't already <laughs> planned, it's not going to happen. Okay, but it could already be planned. This is fan wanking. Be. We're fan wanking. It could be, but I can't stand Drink the Kool-Aid, man. I cannot drink the semen-filled Kool-Aid. This is why I don't get involved in Doctor Who fan community stuff anymore, because I can't stand it. I can't stand it, Chris! And speaking of final questions, uh, uh, Doctor Who, Dan asks, do you hope that the Doctor's daughter Jenny will return? Nope! As I, as I, as I already sort of covertly answered earlier, no. No, no. <laughs> Not at all. No. Nope, 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 no, no, nope, nope, no, no, nope, no, 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 no. That ship has sailed. That is a no. story they could have told before. But if it was a story they could have told before, they should have told it during the Tenant era and, and in like a second episode, done, sorted, finished. Oh yeah, Moffat's not going to bring back plot threads from someone else's run. No. I don't think. She's besides, be besides Moffat out Jenny, Jenny by developing River Song. Yeah. Jenny's pointless because River Song has told the story of the person out of time catching up with him. So yeah, fuck it. Uh, it's left open ended anyway. It's left open ended as like she's probably off saving people and being a badass. There's somewhere. probably four big finished box sets about Jenny at this point, so not yet. But don't give them ideas. <laughs> so let's big finish. We love cash. Uh, so they love it. Yeah, they love it. And finally, I just want to bring this one up. We did have another email as well this week. Uh, for some reason, it went to the spam folder. Okay, all right. Um, uh -huh. oh, but it's from the uh, Marriott Hotel in Canada. Ah. Uh. Oh, we've got, um, we've got listeners far afield, it seems. Yeah, uh, apparently, the management of Marriott Hotel Canada is recruiting new workers whose careers sweets into these categories below. Oh! Uh, interested candidates should forward their CV to this email address, marriott.ca at outlook.com. Sure, sure, yeah, all right. Yeah. They're looking okay. for <laughs> that doctors, doctors, university graduate, they're looking for stewards and nurses, pharmacists, accountants and auditors, deputy managers... Bar managers, shop managers, engineers and mechanics, purchasing manager, sure. and food beverage manager, sounds and light technicians, maintenance managers, supervisors, we've got it as club bouncers now, the professional messengers, um, the professional beauticians, uh, housekeepers, uh, and lastly, a cleaners, gardener and florists. Uh, announcer, announcer management is the sign off of that email. Um, well, I'm sorry, guys, but we're not really available to come to I'm Canada. I'm not available to come see. I mean, I could do at least four of those jobs. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not but... quite sure what made you think we'd be the people to reach out to. But you know, we're flattered. Um, Is this a sponsorship wanna, thing? If they, they want, they... I mean, if they want to sponsor the podcast. If the Marriott Hotel in Canada wants to sponsor us, okay, that's great. Well, this is now the Big Damn Cast, sponsored by the Marriott Hotel Canada. <laughs> um, we will who are now hiring for a variety of roles. Over 30 different roles required oh, at the Marriott 30. Hotel Canada. So if you want to apply for those roles, guys, uh, email address is... <laughs> That's marriott.ca <laughs> oh well. at outlook.com The most official of... Ah, so you know, know, you know it's the Marriott Hotel Canada because it's an Outlook address. And... All businesses, all legitimate businesses, use Outlook as their web provider. Marriott.ca. The .ca made it a Canadian web address. It's Marriott.ca at Outlook.com. Over 30 roles required. <laughs> 
How unprofessional. Anyway, if you want to get in touch, bigdamncontact at gmail.com. That's bigdamncontact at gmail.com. Sponsored by Marriott Hotel Canada. That's it for Big Damn Cast this week. Uh, we'll see you in the uh, Marriott Hotel in Canada. Uh, or next week with another fine episode of this delicious podcast. Oh, mints. Fine mints. Maria Hotel Canada. All will be carved. <laughs>